Shut up and dance with me. A witty game. Chapter 8. Shut up and dance. Group chat. Family barbecue. Today's menu. Spit roasted squad. Cuckoo motherfuckers. Alright, I need to know who's here, so roll call time. Set both names. I start. Pinch. Up down honk. Honk. Fuck off. Uh, Keith. Viva la lance. Blitz, aka the pain of your dreams. Fuck off. More like nightmares. Viva la lance. You know what, Keith? You're absolutely right. Fuck off. I am. Viva la lance. Yeah, this level of perfection is frightening. Fuck off. Amazing. Viva la lance. Thank you. Cuckoo, motherfuckers. Alright, so Tweedledee and Tweedledum right here. Got it? Fuck off. Dibs on Tweedledee. Viva la lance. What? No! You're totally Tweedledum! Fuck off. Uh, why is that? Cuckoo, motherfuckers. He's just going to say it's because you're dumb. Viva la lance. Because I make you speechless. Fuck off. I up, down, unk. Oh, cuckoo, motherfuckers. Wow! Fuck off. Yeah. Cuckoo, motherfuckers. I'm actually a little impressed. Fuck off. I actually have nothing to say to that. Viva la lance. <laughs> Fuck off. I'm just so surprised you made an intelligent joke. Viva la lance. You know, I'm sensing some sass over there, but I'm going to ignore it in favor of the compliments. Fuck off. Do what you gotta do to make yourself feel better. Cuckoo, motherfuckers. Can you just stop clogging up the chat long enough for me to figure out if the others are here? Fuck off. You're not my mom. Cuckoo, motherfuckers. Keith, I will beat your ass. I know where you live. Fuck off. Where you munchkin, I put out the mouse traps. Cuckoo, motherfuckers. I will murder your kneecaps. Fuck off. I'll stand on the table. <laughs> Cuckoo, motherfuckers. I will climb up that meatball physique to punch you in the jaw. Viva la lance. Fight! 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 Fuck off. I'll sit on you. Cuckoo, motherfuckers. Bitch! You weigh like two pounds! Viva la lance. Not to be a buzzkill, cause you know I love a good fashion page slash Keith beat now. But Keith is a heavy as fuck fat ass! Can't confirm! Fuck off. Just because you have the upper body strength of a diseased hamster. Viva la lance. Excuse? Up that arm. So, like, you guys know I love you, and I love all your shenanigans, but I've got a paper I need to write and a lot of research to do for it. So, can we, like, hurry this along? Viva la lance. Sorry, buddy. Up down, hunk. No problem, dude. Viva la lance. Heart. Up down, hunk. Double heart. Fuck off. What did you need, bitch? Cuckoo, motherfuckers. Right. Where are the more adulty adults? Fuck off. Pretty sure Shiro is working at the museum. Up that hunk. Probably Allura too then, because they usually try to line up their schedules. Cuckoo, motherfuckers. <laughs> basically Mary! <laughs> Fuck off. Basically. Viva la lance. Hey, Amen! Up that hunk. I think it's cute. Cuckoo, motherfuckers. You win, you being softy! Up that hunk. I can't help it. Cuckoo, motherfuckers. You don't need to help it, you're perfect, hunk. Uh, up, down, hug. Aww, I already told you I'm not making cookies tonight. Cuckoo, motherfuckers. Where are they shot? Someone in that Quran. Viva la las. His prop's still at the studio. Dude's there all day. Cuckoo, motherfuckers. Yeah, but he usually checks his phone for messages, especially when he's got downtime in the office. Viva la las. It's Monday, right? Up, down, hug. Yup, and this paper, by the way, is due Friday. And Pidge is in this class, too. So I know they should be working right now. Cuckoo, motherfuckers. You're not my mom! Up, down, arm. No work, no cookies. Cuckoo, motherfuckers. Fuck! Viva la lance. Pretty sure coran has got some classes today? Cuckoo, motherfuckers. God damn it! Fuck off. What'd you want to tell us? Cuckoo, motherfuckers. I can't now! Fuck off. Question mark? Cuckoo, motherfuckers. You've all got to be here when I make the announcement. Otherwise, there won't be the proper mix of excitement and peer pressure. Plus, it'll just get lost by your constant blathering, and I can't be asked to get excited twice. Up that hunk. All right, so is this meeting done then? 
Cuckoo cool, cool, motherfuckers. Post come down to where they're not is. I'm down on. All right, want to meet in the living room to cross-examine sources. Cuckoo cool, cool, motherfuckers. Sounds good. Viva la lance. Great, now that the nerds are gone, we can talk about cool things. How's it going, Keith? Fuck off. I'm out. Viva la lance. Keith, no, wait! Fuck off. What? Viva la lance. I'm bored. Fuck off. Not my problem. Viva la lance. Why are you always so rude? She wrote and raised you this way. Fuck off. She once told me that if I ate enough spiders, I could absorb their power and be like Spider-Man. Viva la lance. Wow! How many spiders did you eat? Fuck off. I don't want to talk about it. Viva la lance. Was it upwards of ten? Fuck off. I don't want to talk about it. Viva la lance. Alright, alright. But don't think I'm gonna let you forget about this. Fuck off. What a dream of it. Viva la lance. Cool. So you doing anything? Fuck off. Not really. Viva la lance. Wanna play games? Fuck off. Yeah, sure. Hoop chat. Family barbecue. Today's menu. Spoon roasted squad. Hoo-hoo, motherfuckers. Alright, take two. Sound off, nerds. Viva la lance. One. I must stash you for your soul. Two. Up, down, honk. Three. Hoo-hoo, motherfuckers. Alright, I waited long enough. Up, down, honk. You literally waited two minutes. Hoo-hoo, motherfuckers. Two minutes is an eternity in pitch time. Where are the others? Shira, Alora, Keith? Ping, ping, motherfuckers. I swear, if you're all at the gym again, I must ask you for your soul. I believe Laura has a shift at the museum, right? Be the little ass. And you know that means she does, because my man Grant has that crazy knack for remembering schedules. I must ask you for your soul. Thank you, Lance. Tonight isn't a part of her normal schedule, however. From what I remember her calling out before she dashed out of the apartment, they were short-staffed at the museum tonight, so she had to rush over for a closing shift. Cool, cool, motherfuckers. Ah! I must ask you for your soul. Sorry, Pinch. Cuckoo, motherfuckers. Dare I even ask where the others are? Uptown Hunk. I have no idea. I must ask you for your soul. Nor do I. Cuckoo, motherfuckers. Hmm. Two sex. Uptown Hunk. What are you going to do? Cuckoo, motherfuckers. Text Matt. Uptown Hunk. And? Cuckoo, motherfuckers. Ah! Uptown Hunk. I take that as no luck. Cuckoo, motherfuckers. He's not answering me. That nerd is pretty much glued to his phone 24 7. Viva the lands. You mean like you? Cuckoo, motherfuckers. Why can I say the family resemblance is strong? I must ask you for your soul. In that case, if he's so glued to his phone, should you worry? Cuckoo, motherfuckers. Nah, I mean, probably not. Neither of them are answering, and typically that means they're having breath time. Viva the lands. <laughs> oh man, breath time! Up, down, hunk. Hey, man, don't miss the importance of bro time. Viva la lance. You're right. I'm sorry for bringing dishonor to bros everywhere. Up, down, hunk. It's okay. I forgive you, bro. Viva la lance. Bro! Cuckoo, motherfuckers. God, you two are so gay. Just like Matt and Shira. Jesus, why does everyone around me so gay? Viva la lance. We flock to each other. Up, down, hunk. Pidge, I've seen you with Keith. You guys are pretty gay, too. Cuckoo, motherfuckers. Oh, Grandma, no homo, but that one lands. They're probably doing old man bro time. They lock themselves in their apartment, no phones, no girlfriends or boyfriends, and playing, I don't know, Uno or something. Viva the lands. Sounds riveting. I must ask you for your soul. Indeed, sounds like a very good time. Just dudes being dudes. Viva the lands. Oh my god, Grand, did you just, like, have me? I must ask you for your soul. Cool, smiley face. Viva the lands. I'm just so proud. Cuckoo, motherfuckers. Speaking of Keith, where is that guy? Viva the lads. He's at work. Once. Once. Up that arc. That just had like no hesitation. Viva the lads. So? Cuckoo, motherfuckers. So how do you know with complete certainty what Keith is doing right now? Viva the lads. Hold up. Viva La Lance has sent an image of down hunk. Aww, he looks so pissed. Cuckoo, motherfuckers. Now that's just his face. Fuck off. Rude. Cuckoo, motherfuckers. Nice of you to join us. Fuck off. I just wanted to say that Lance took that without my consent. 
who could motherfuckers get on say of that arc. I couldn't tell from the glare you're giving the camera. Cuckoo, motherfuckers. Oh, how you're flipping it up. I must ask you for your soul. Visually, it's a very endearing contrast between Keith's sour look and Lance's smile, not to mention Keith's crude gesture and Lance's peace sign. A wonderful selfie, I say. Up there, Mark. Seconded. Viva la Lance. Thanks, Grant. Fuck out. Fuck off. Viva la Lance. I'm going to start a photo collection called Tags I Surprised Keith and He Looks Stupid. Fuck off. I hate you. Viva the Lance. Yeah, sure. Cuckoo, motherfuckers. We can really feel the hate between you two. Up down, Ugg. I, for one, only visit my mortal enemies at work. Viva la Lance. Hunk, don't do me like this. Cuckoo, motherfuckers. What are you at the bookstore anyway? Up down, Ugg. Who are you and what have you done with Lance? I must ask you for your soul. I feel we should be questioning what Keith has done to Lance. Of that on. Good point, Grant. Keith, whatever you're doing to Lance, it scares me, but I think it's for the best. Fuck off. It's not an easy job. Hoo hoo, motherfuckers. I can't imagine it with me. Up down, Unk. Do you even know how long I've been trying to get him to read? Hoo hoo, motherfuckers. Years! Up down, Unk. Years, man! Hoo hoo, motherfuckers. And now he's been in a bookstore twice! Give the lands. I'm not sure whether I should be offended or not! Fuck off. It's always a safe bet to assume we're assaulting you. Be the little lands. Keith, go back to shopping! And for your information, I'm here because Leo had turned into a book devouring beast and eating my books! Fuck off. It reads faster than Lance. Be the little lands. That's not fair! He has more time! Up down, Unc. Leo's always been my favorite. Viva the lads. Honk! Up down, Unc. Besides you, Lance. Viva the lads. Honk! Coo hoo, motherfuckers. Leo has a lot of potential. Viva the lads. Pinch! Don't! Coo hoo, motherfuckers. Don't what, Lance? Viva the lads. I see you plotting in that ellipses! Coo hoo, motherfuckers. I would never! I just see them as my own younger siblings. It wouldn't hurt to take them under my wing. Look at how lovely Sophie turned out! Viva the lads. Sophie is a demon! She threatened to break my toes when all I did was tickle her! Cuckoo, motherfuckers. She makes me proud! Viva the lads. She's been tainted, but you leave Leo alone! Fuck up. It's like a small version of Lance. Viva la lance. Thank you. It makes me proud. Bug off. Only more cultured and polite. Viva la lance. Shouldn't you be working? Bug off. I am. Viva la lance. No, you're not. Put your phone away. Bug off. Make me the book. <laughs> my name is Keith the book, and I hear by <laughs> make lance my official spokesman for the group chat while I'm working. Viva la lance. Awesome. Thank you, Keith. I'm so honored. Bug off. No problem, Lance. You're just the most handsome and charming and funny and qualified person for the job. Viva the Lance. I know! Fuck off. Swoon. Viva the Lance. Finger guns! Fuck off. Oh, Lance. You're so cool. Viva the Lance. Man, you're finally coming around! Up down, Ark. Yeah. So I'm going to just leave the group chat for a while. I've got, uh, stuff to do. But I must ask you for your soul. I'm already ahead of you. Cuckoo, motherfuckers. Sam, I don't need to sit here and watch Lance sex yourself. Viva the lands. Okay, okay, but for real, Keith wants to know what your announcement was, Pidge. Cuckoo, motherfuckers. Nope, the moment is past and we're missing our parents. Viva the lands. Boo! Cuckoo, motherfuckers. Go ask Keith about the time he thought he was secretly dating Mouth Fan. Viva the lands. Oh, I am so on it! Group chat family barbecue. Today's menu spit roasted squad. Hoo hoo, motherfuckers. It's been abnormally quiet here. Dare I ask if everyone is here? Hop down, hunk. I am. I must ask you for your soul. Present. Luna, guys. I'm hip. Need a hand? What's up, bitch? My god. Are you still trying to make that announcement? Hoo hoo, motherfuckers. Yes. So far, all my attempts have been thwarted. I must ask you for your soul. Fulton is such a lovely and old like East Up, Dan Punk. Agreed. Petition to use the word thwarted more. 
I am a statue for your soul. Petition signed! Of that mark. Smiley face. Luminous goddess. What announcement is this? I am a statue for your soul. Young Peach here has been attempting to gather all of us at once to make some sort of announcement. Of that mark. Yeah, you've been gone both times. Fuck off. Shiro was gone too. Cuckoo motherfuckers. Yeah, someone is always missing. Getting you all together at the same time is surprisingly difficult. Need a hand. I wouldn't think it would be that hard. Cuckoo motherfuckers. Laws of the universe, Shiro. I want you all together, therefore it's going to be as difficult as possible. Up, down, on. Cold, hard truth. Fuck off. Can't be helped. I must ask you for your soul. Proven fact. Illuminate goddess. Oh, well, I'm here now. Need a hand. Sir, I'd be glad to hear your announcement, bitch. Cuckoo motherfuckers. Thank you. Fuck off. We told you before that we were willing to listen. Cuckoo motherfuckers. Yeah, but you weren't all here. Fuck off. You still gotta told us. Cuckoo motherfuckers. And I told you that I need everyone present to A, keep from repeating myself, and B, use the group hype and peer pressure against sticks and the money on you. Fuck off. I changed my mind. I don't want to hear this announcement. Cuckoo motherfuckers. Too late. Fuck off. I can leave. Cuckoo motherfuckers. You won't. Fuck off. Try me short stuff. Need a hand. Kids, behave and let me speak. Cuckoo motherfuckers. Thanks, Dad. Need a hand. Fuck off, Dad. Cuckoo motherfuckers. Dad. Fuck off, Dad. Up that mark. Dad. Lunar goddess. Stop. And mustache you for your soul. Ah, cuckoo motherfuckers. Pause. Fuck off. Nope. Up that dog. Yeah. Lunar goddess. What? The cuckoo motherfuckers. Yeah, it's weird when you two say it. Lunar goddess. Who? Up that dog. You and Coram. I must ask you for your soul. Angry face. Need a hand. Anyway, does this have anything to do with what Rap won't tell me because, and I quote, if I tell you first, Pidge will kill me mercilessly and without remorse and probably with a blunt, easily disposable object, so until then I'm giving my hype to myself? Cuckoo, motherfuckers. Yes! Good to know he's abiding by my sense! Lunar goddess. So what's going on, Pidge? I must ask you for your soul. Does this have anything to do with yours and Hunk's duo performance? Up down on. Well, I hope not. I haven't earned anything. Cuckoo, motherfuckers. No, it has nothing to do with that. Up down hunk. What about the robotics project you've been working on for grad school? Cuckoo, motherfuckers. No, Grover is unfortunately not functional yet. Up down hunk. Dang it. Nina and. You had a breakthrough with your TA work? Cuckoo, motherfuckers. Oh, heck no! Those idiots are hopeless! Luna goddess. Is this a family related announcement? Cuckoo, motherfuckers. Sort of? Why did this turn into a guessing game? Lunar goddess. Since we started asking questions and you started answering. Cuckoo, motherfuckers. Of course. Fuck off. Have you heard more chatter through the radio? Cuckoo, motherfuckers. Unfortunately, negative. Fuck off. Damn it. I must ask you for your soul. Radio chatter? Fuck off. Pidge is monitoring for alien activity. Need a hand. Or they know. Cuckoo, motherfuckers. Don't patronize me, Dan. I must ask you for your soul. Fascinating. Might I ask what frequencies you're using? Aluminium for amplifying your signal receiver? Up, down, on. Uh, not to interrupt, but we're kind of forgetting someone. Need a hand. Oh. Lunar goddess. Oops. I must ask you for your soul. Oh, trapped. Cuckoo, motherfuckers. I knew it was too silent in this chat earlier. Fuck off. Nope, sorry, I'm drawing a blank. Up that unk. Lance. Fuck off. Does it ring a bell? Thank you, motherfuckers. Where is he anyway? He's like always going to his room when he's at home. Up that unk. Oh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure I haven't heard from him all day. Fuck off. Maybe he's been reading. Up that unk. You know, I might have once poked fun at him for that, but now it might be a possibility. Thank you, motherfuckers. Hunk's right, it's not as fun anymore. Lunar goddess, I'm so proud of him. I must ask you for your soul. He's grown so much. Need a hand. You've been a good influence on your kids. Give it the lens. Yo, I got a pink, what's up? And make it quick, I want a time crunch. Need a hand. Chris wants to make an announcement. Give it the lens. Oh crap, that one they've been talking about for like two days. Need a hand. Apparently. 
cuckoo motherfuckers. Lance, it's very important that you're here for this announcement. You got time? I need you to get ready. Fuck off. Why is Liam so important? Viva the Lance. Jealous much? Fuck off. In your dreams. Viva the Lance. In my dreams, you're doing an interpretive dance to my greatness. Need a hand. I'm curious too, why is Lance so important to the announcement? Cuckoo, motherfuckers. He's my main hype man. Viva the Lance. Oh, yeah. Up that wrong. He's very good at that. Fuck off. I definitely don't want to know now. Viva the Lance. Shut your trap, moment. I must ask you for yourself. Well, now they're all here, shall we commence with the announcement? Viva the Lance. No can do. Brain trick. Cuckoo, motherfuckers. What? Why? Viva the Lance. Paige, if you want me to do you any justice at your height, man, you'll call the Ray Jack. I don't have time to devote the time and energy you deserve at the moment. Up that arc. What's going on, dude? Viva the lens. I may or may not be hiding in the closet right now. Cuckoo, motherfuckers. Hi! Up that arc. Dude. Viva the lens. Not like that! I am literally hiding in the closet because someone pinged me and I needed a safe place to hide. Lunar goddess. Um. Fuck off. I feel like I'm missing something. Need an end. Lance, what's going on? Viva la Lance. Don't call down on me, Shiro. I'm babysitting. Lunar goddess. I don't mean to question your methods, Lance, but... I must ask you for your soul. From a closet? Viva la Lance. It's not what it looks like. I'm watching Younger 4. Down long. Aren't there a Younger 5? Viva la Lance. Yeah, but the lolly is still with his mom. It's just the board. Fuck off. I'm still trying to figure out how the closet fits into this. And who, motherfuckers? I hope you and Sophie liked you in there. Viva the lens. <laughs> Not a chance! We're in the middle of war! Not war! Up, down, down. Oh! Lunar goddess. I say nerf guns. Viva the lens. And all their nerf accessories. Leo has a bow and arrow, and Abby has a slingshot. Lunar goddess. You sound like an amazing babysitter, Lance. Viva the lens. Thanks, babe! I'm mustache for your soul. Wish we had those back in my day. We used actual slingshots, sticks, and pitbull guns. Need a hand. In the house? I'm mustache for your soul. Cool face. Viva la lance. Damn, Grain, you go hard! I'm mustache for your soul. Thank you, Lance. I think. Cuckoo, motherfuckers. So Leo and Sophie basically got you pinned down? Viva la lance. <laughs> no, not even. They don't even know I'm here. Cuckoo, motherfuckers. I could text them. Viva the lands. Go to there! Fuck off. Are you losing to a bunch of kids? Viva the lands. It's four against one kid! The little ones have no mercy, and the bigger ones are sneaky! Fuck off. I am so disappointed in you right now. Viva the lands. I see how you and Shira are siblings now! Hunk! You busy bunny! Up that wrong. Not at the moment. I just finished my homework and pages at the library. Probably procrastinating on their essay because they started this conversation. Goo goo, motherfuckers. You're not my mom, hunk. Need a hand. Pooch. Goo goo, motherfuckers. Oh, I'm gonna look what you've done. Be the balance. Cheryl, rubber man, page leader. Hunk, I need your money. Be my makeup. Up down, hunk. I would be honored. Be the balance. Do you still have that? Automatic with the bonus clips! Of that knock. Of course. Viva the lands. Good, cause they suck me with a manual reload and I'm pants down! Cuckoo motherfuckers. Call me! Of that knock. I'm on my way. It'll take me 20 to get there. Can you make it? Viva the lands. I'll do my buns! Of that knock. Also, is there dinner later? Viva the lands. Mom, give me money for pizza! Of that knock. Will it be all worried if I'm there? Viva the lands. Dude, she loves you and the kids are a mess. I need you, me amigo. Up that unk. On it, hombre. Viva the lands. I love you. Up that unk. I love you too. Fuck off. What did I just witness? Cuckoo motherfuckers. The sound of my frustrated heart breaking and having to pull a rain check on my announcement money's nerds. Fuck off. Has it ever occurred to you that you're just as dramatic in your own way? Cuckoo, motherfuckers. Uh, you take that back. Fuck off. Make me. Cuckoo, motherfuckers. I know your passwords. Fuck off. Hey, Shiro, Pidge is behind on their essay and procrastinating. Need to add. Pidge, you're in the library. You really shouldn't be in the group chat. Cuckoo, motherfuckers. Keith, you're the worst. 
Fuck off. Payback for telling Lance about the Mothman incident. Cuckoo, motherfuckers. What then? Group chat, family barbecue, today's menu, slow broil, rain check. Cuckoo, motherfuckers. Dare I even ask? Hello? Okay, I know that my luck at getting everyone in at the same time is terrible, but there's usually somebody. No? Oh, come on! I'm stuck in the library for the next hour before Matt picks me up for dinner. If that's right, I'll even set up a Lance's company. We go love Lance. Okay, rude! Cuckoo, motherfuckers. Finally! Viva la lance. No kids, stay, my mini dude. Corinne asked me to cover for him teaching some of the kids' classes. Fuck off. You teach classes? Viva la lance. Young man, I'm charismatic and handsome, and I'm both young minds. Cuckoo, motherfuckers. He's teaching some kids' dance classes. Viva la lance. Same thing! Cuckoo, motherfuckers. You're not really molding their minds. Viva la lance. Can't say molding their bodies, dude. That's weird and wrong. Cuckoo, motherfuckers. Point taken. Fuck off. Just didn't see you was the type to be able to teach kids. Viva la lance. I'm going to take offense to that. Fuck off. I'm pleasantly surprised. Viva la lance. I'm taking it as a compliment. Want to listen? Fuck off. So you can drop me like you do during Shiro and Alora's lessons? I don't think so. Viva the lands. You drop me! Fuck off. You can't prove anything. Viva the lands. I have bruises! Fuck off. Those could be from anywhere. Cuckoo, motherfuckers. You are a clumsy dude with limbs that flail everywhere. Viva the lands. This is getting dangerously close to insulting lands territory. Luckily, I have to go start cash now. Ask the later, kids. Red check, bitch. Cuckoo, motherfuckers. Ah! Viva la lance. If you want lessons, Keith, I'm teaching ballroom at six. I can show you up there, too. Fuck off. I find that hard to believe. Cuckoo, motherfuckers. He's actually good. Fuck off. Seriously? Cuckoo, motherfuckers. Dead serious. Keith? Fuck off. Sorry, just needed a moment to process that information. Cuckoo, motherfuckers. Don't worry, I'm sure you can show him up with contra dancing. Fuck off. We agreed not to speak of that. Cuckoo, motherfuckers. I do not recall. Keith? I'm sorry, come back, I'm bored. Fuck off. Sorry, I'm in the middle of my shift and I have to go to the register now. Order to text. Cuckoo, motherfuckers. Damn it! You take this to mean Karan is gone too? I must ask you for your soul. Yep. I have a reunion with my own Georgia dance trip tonight. Up down arc. Oh man, I love those guys. You guys are so fun to watch. I must ask you for your soul. Thank you, Hulk. Up down arc. Do we get to see you guys perform sometime soon? I must ask you for your soul. Perhaps. Up down arc. Oh man, oh man. Cuckoo motherfuckers. Hulk, does that mean you're here? Up down arc. Nope, I have my TA hours right now. Cuckoo motherfuckers. Damn it, I forgot. Up down arc. I just snuck away to check my phone, but I gotta get back to work. Cuckoo motherfuckers. Ah, oh, fine. Up down arc. See you later at all. Cuckoo motherfuckers. See you later. Where are Shiro and Alora? Lena goddess. Sorry, Pitch. Since Karan is gone for the evening, I'm having some quality me time. I love you all, but I have a bath bomb, a bottle of wine, and Netflix with my name on it. Putting my phone away now. Alora out. Cuckoo motherfuckers. Well, that's one mystery solved. Nina and sorry, Pigeon. Meeting up with some old friends tonight for a beer. Cuckoo, motherfuckers. Yes. You have friends other than us. Nina and believe it or not, I do. Cuckoo, motherfuckers. Oh God, you're using emojis. Wanky emojis. You've already had a beer, haven't you? Nina and perhaps. Cuckoo, motherfuckers. You're banned from the chat until further notice. Nina and frowning face. Cuckoo, motherfuckers. Nope, not dealing with this alone. Nina hands. A crew of time. Cuckoo, motherfuckers. Why am I the only one here to witness this? Nina and Gotta go first. Cuckoo, motherfuckers. I'm crying and I don't know if my tears are for pride or embarrassment. Nina and Warpage. Cuckoo, motherfuckers. Stop winking. Nina and Winking. Sad face. Cuckoo, motherfuckers. All right, you know what? I love to. Group chat, family barbecue, today's menu, slow broiled rain check.
Viva la lads. I am still so upset that I missed Cheryl's tipsy memeing of that art. You read back through it. Viva la lads. Well, yeah, but it's not the same as seeing it live. Nina and It wasn't that big of a deal, Lance. Viva la lads. Says you! Fuck off. I could have lived without saying it. Nina Ann. Thank you, Keith. Fuck off. It wasn't a compliment. Nina Ann. I'm still drinking it as you being on my side. Fuck off. The more you drink, the more you act like a weird hybrid form of pig and lance. Viva la lance. You say that like it's a bad thing. Fuck off. It definitely is. Viva la lance. Nuts! You forget the nun in that sentence. Nina Ann. I blame Matt. He's basically an older version of Pidge. Fuck off. Matt wasn't even there. Nina had. No, but going up close to the Holtz was bound to have some side effects. Fuck off. Can't argue with that. Be the little ants. I hope we have another Splat movie night soon. I miss seeing drunk Shiro. Last time I got him to speak only in pickup lines and puns. Up that night. That was so much fun. Nina had. What's not? Luna Goddess. I thought it was cute. Viva the lands. See? Oh, Laura thought it was cute. We can't deny that Laura thinks that are cute. And if that thing is Shiro being drunk and ridiculous, then my god, will I take one for the team and get fans fan drunk? Nina and. Oh, Laura, why do you do this to me? You negatis. Is that only because I love you? Viva the lands. Yes, yeah, Shiro, we love you. Shiro? Fuck off. You definitely broke him, Alora. Neither the lands. How would you know? Fuck off. He's at my place. He was helping me with my bike, but now he's just bright red and trying to remember how to breathe. I never took any CPR training, so if he goes down, he's down for good. Say your goodbyes now. Up that arc. Bye, Shiro. I'll miss you. You gave good hugs. Can I have your snickerdoodle recipe? I must ask you for your soul. Goodbye, Shiro. You were a good man and a good dancer. I'll resurrect your statue in your honor in the entry hall of the studio. Luna Goddess. Would it help if I took back what I said? Was the wink face too much? Fuck off. Pretty sure the damage has already been done. Viva la lads. And the winky face was perfect, Laura. Keep that flustered dad is hilarious. Also, ha! <laughs> Keep working on the bike. Up that hunk. It's a motorcycle, dude. Viva la lads. Motorcycle! Fuck off. Uh, yeah. Up that hog. You didn't know. Viva the lens. No! How do you know? Up that hunk. He rode it over to our place once. I must ask you for your soul. He always parks it in the back. It's quite a beautiful machine, Keith. Fuck off. Thanks. I built it from scratch. Viva the lens. You built your bike! Luna Goddess. You didn't know Keith is a good mechanic. Viva the lens. No! Fuck off. Yeah. Viva the lands. I need a moment. Luna Goddess. Looks like we've got two down. Up, down, arc. R.I.P. I must ask you for your soul. Not to detract from the current breakdowns of our beloved friends, but I would certainly be down for another rousing scrub get together. Luna Goddess. Same. Up, down, arc. Oh, oh, same. Fuck off. Oh, no. Viva the lands. Oh, yes! Party, party, party! Fuck off. That didn't take long. Viva the lands. I'm currently ignoring the fact that you drive a bike and people are thinking about a squad party. Up oh, that mark. Big smile. Luna Goddess. Winking smile. I must touch her for your soul. Very big, cool smile. Viva the lands. Speaking of our squad, looks like everyone's here. So where's Binge? Up oh, that mark. Oh, oh, they're going to be so mad. They're TAing a class right now. They should be back in like two hours. Viva the lands. Oh, great. I've got to leave for work in an hour and a half. Up that nug. Bang. Fuck off. You work. Viva the lands. Yes, Keith, I'm a responsible adult. Fuck off. Hold her be surprised. Viva the lands. Angry face. I must ask you for your soul. Lance is a very responsible employee when he works with us. Viva la Lance. Thank you! Fuck off. I never said he wouldn't be. Viva la Lance. Was that almost a compliment? Keith Gogaman, did you almost compliment me? Near the end. Keith wants me to say that he can't hear you because he's too busy working on his bike. Later.
Cuckoo, motherfuckers. Everyone was here! Fuck! Nina and Language! Cuckoo, motherfuckers. Retracted. Fuck. Nina and Why do I bother? Boop chat. Family barbecue. Today's menu is slow broiled rain jack. <laughs> Viva the lens. Bitch! 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 Bitching! Bitch! 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 Amazing word of prank come down from above you and let summoned! Bitch! 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 Poop your motherfuckers. Lens! Oh my god! Stop yelling! Viva the lens. Seeing as this is a texting program, I physically am not actually yelling! Who coo motherfuckers. This is the texting equivalent of yelling, you ball of sunny fruit loops! I was being fascist! Viva the lands. I am not entirely certain what that means! Coo coo motherfuckers. You're on the internet right now! Google it! Viva the lands. No time, this is important! Coo coo motherfuckers. Then what is it? Up down hunk. <laughs> Can we stop using caps now? It's hurting my eyes. Need a hand. Circuited. Viva the lens. No can no! Caps lock is cruise control to awesome! Fuck off. Never say that again. Viva the lens. Fuck off! Fuck off. That's my name. Don't wear it out. Viva the lens. Did you just- Oh my god! You just made a dead joke! Shiro, what have you done to him? Nina and why do you blame me? Even the lens. You're clearly the dad and your teeth's brother. Obviously, your nearness is rubbing dad humor up on him. Nina and <laughs> Lance, you're overreacting. Keith's humor has been like that since he was a kid. Viva the lens. You're kidding. Nina hand. Nope. Viva the lens. Keith? Fuck off. Shrugs. Viva the lens. I I didn't do that to him. Fuck off. Dramatic. Viva the lens. Shut up, I can't tell that this is the best or worst thing that's ever happened to me. Cuckoo motherfuckers. Lance, please. What did you call me in here for the second my class ended? I haven't even gotten home yet. Viva the lens. Right! Fuck off. And he bounces back fast. Up, down, arm. Always as. Viva the lens. Bitch, watch this! Roll call! Lance! Handsome, humble, and here. Viva the lens. Don't say anything, Keith! Fuck off. I didn't say anything. Viva the lens. But you were going to say one of those things is true! Fuck off. <laughs> Thanks for insulting yourself for me. Viva the lens. Moving on? Keith! Fuck off. Seriously? Viva the lens. Oh, come on! Play along! Fuck off. Fine. Here. Viva the lens. Thank you! Hunk! Up, down, hunk. Yo! Viva the lens. Shiro! Need a hand. Here. Viva the lens. Alora! Lunar goddess. Here. Yeah. Viva the lens. Grandma man! I'm a statue for your soul. Present. Viva the lens. And last but clearly not least, Paige! Who could motherfuckers? Holy shit! Viva the lens. Cool face. Who could motherfuckers? Are we actually all here? Viva the lens. Yeah, boy! And that's me, time! Up, down, arc. Speech! 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 A lunar goddess. It's your time to shine, bitch! Cuckoo, motherfuckers. Finally! Or maybe I should build suspense. Need a hand. Purge? Cuckoo, motherfuckers. Fine! Alright, nerds, listen up! So you know how Matt's been looking for a new DJ gig? Viva the lance. I like where this is going! Up, down, on. Oh! Lunar goddess. I think you're both of those statements. Need a hand. So that's why he's been in such a good mood lately. Cuckoo motherfuckers. Guys, please stop stealing my thunder! Up down arc. Oh, sorry. Lunar goddess. Sorry. Viva the lance. My bad. Need a hand. Sorry, Bridge. Go on. Cuckoo motherfuckers. Thank you! Matt got a gig at Palmyra starting this weekend. Guess what squad is going coming Saturday since it's both my brother's first day on the job! Viva the lance. Oh! Oh my god! Oh my god! Cuckoo motherfuckers. Here's my hype man! Luna goddess. Oh my god! Viva the lands. That's the spirit of Laura! Luna goddess. We're going clubbing! Viva the lands. Let me do your hair! Luna goddess. Only if I get to do your outfit. Viva the lands. Done and done! Cuckoo motherfuckers. Have I mentioned the best part? We get it for free. 
because Matt's putting us on the guest list. Viva the Lance. I am dying and going to heaven. I see the pearly gates and they're going in strip lights and surrounded by some deep ass rays. Nuna Goddess, this is so exciting. I cannot wait. Goo goo, motherfuckers. All right, Club Twins, time to turn your hype onto our favorite sticks in the metaphorical mud. Viva the Lance. I'm on it. Punk? Buddy? Up down on it. I'm in. So that's fine. But uh, I want we have like an agreed upon safe word and agreement in case things get like to be too much. To what we're stimulating, a lot happens at clubs. Viva la lance. Don't worry, buddy, we got you. Up down unk. Thanks, dude. I'm gonna stash you for your soul. You can help me in as well. It's been a while since I've been able to call loose at one of those establishments. Viva la lance. Hooray, the man! I must ask you for your soul. I'm going to bring out and dust off my old leather pants. Good do, motherfuckers. Oh, dear God. Viva the lens. Okay. Didn't expect that, but I love your enthusiasm. Of that arc. I really don't want to see that. Luna goddess. I'll make sure he's appropriately dressed before leaving the apartment. Cuckoo, motherfuckers. Bless. Near the end. I'm a do. Luna goddess. To be honest, I expect him to be more convincing. Me to end. That's my roommate and best friend. I'm not going to miss seeing him on his first day. Winter Goddess. That's actually really sweet. Viva the lands. Spoken like a true dad. Me to end. Not to mention we can all stand off to the side of the DJ booth and embarrass him by acting like a proud family. Go, go, motherfuckers. Now that's the Shira I know and love. So that just leaves my favorite stick in the mud. Viva the lands. Keith! Nina and Keith. Nina and Keith. Luna Goddess. Keith. Up down Unk. Keith. I must ask you for your soul. Keith! Fuck off. Oh, would you look at the time. Viva the Lance. No! No, 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 no! Keith, my man, my dude, buddy, you are going to that club with us! Fuck off. I am not. Viva the Lance. You are so! Fuck off. I'm not really the clubbing type. Cuckoo, motherfuckers. Nina is Shiro and Hunk and then Ellen. Up that arm. Yeah, it'll be fun, dude. I mean, I don't think clubs are always fun, but we're going with friends, so we can make it fun. Luna Goddess. We'd love it if you came out with us, Keith. We don't really get to hang out much outside of the studio. I'm a station for your soul. You're only young once. Viva the lands. Yo, yo, I like it. Fuck off. I don't know. Need a hand. Keith, fuck off. Oh no. Need to add. You are part of this family now. You will be going on this family outing with us. Viva la Lance. Oh yeah, that's gonna break. Need to add. Lance, Viva la Lance. No, no, go back to talking to Keith. Fuck off. <gasps> Viva la Lance. Keith, come on. Fuck off. No. Viva la Lance. Yes. Fuck off. No. Viva la Lance. Yes. Oh God. No. Give it a lance. Yes! I will use the puppy dog guys on you! Fuck off. That won't work. Give it the lance. Oh yeah! Guys, go ginger! Fuck off. What is code ginger? Uh, guys? Viva the lance has sent an image. Cuckoo motherfuckers has sent an image. Need a hand has sent an image. Up down punk has sent an image. Lunar goddess has sent an image. I must ask you for your soul has sent an image. Fuck off. You have got to be kidding me. Viva the lance. Cool face. Fuck off. Ugh. Up down unk. Please, Keith. It would really mean a lot. Fuck off. Oh my god. Fine. Viva the lance. Yes! Up down on yay! I must ask you for your soul. Hurrah! Cuckoo, motherfuckers. Excellent! Need a hand. Proud of you, Keith. Luna goddess. I can't wait. Fuck off. I can't believe you guys have a code name for everyone sending the puppy dog look. And why the heck is it called Ginger? Cuckoo, motherfuckers. Because like a ginger, a multitude of puppy dog looks like that will steal your soul, and thus your will, forcing you to give in to our demands. I'm a statue for your soul. It was my idea. Fuck off. You guys are ridiculous. Viva the lands. We love you too, Keith. Up down hug. Heart. Cuckoo motherfuckers. Double heart. I'm a statue for your soul. Triple heart. Lunar goddess. 
quadruple heart, need a hand, quintuple heart. Fuck off. Ugh. One heart. Viva the dance. Yay! Why did I agree to this again? He grumbles, arms crossed over his chest, and leaning to the side to rest his head against the window. Because you love us! Heath sings from one of the middle bucket seats. He twists around to look at him, and his lips are predictably cocked up into that smirk that matches his teasing voice so well. He glares at it and at him. He hates it. He hates them both, Lance and the entity that is his smile. Smirk. Whatever. He hates his mouth and everything that mouth forms, including smirks, smiles, and words. Definitely not. He deadpans. His good humor isn't to turn in the slightest. If anything, his smile widens as he tilts his head to the side. He's done something with his hair to make it look nicer than usual, and he looks great in the outfit that Alora picked out for him. It's casual enough, but it makes Keith wish he had put more effort into his own appearance. Shiro had assured him that he looks fine, but now he's not so sure. He's dull to comparison to Lance. No, no, let's not forget that heart you sent the group implying that you do indeed love us, Lance says, waving his phone in the air for emphasis. Keith glares at him. You can't prove anything. Oh, can't I? No. I screenshotted it. You did not. Oh, I did. Why? For future proof and blackmail, of course. I hate you. Sticks and stones, Keithy Mark, he says, laughing, turning back around in his seat. Stop antagonizing him, Lance. We practically had to drag him out of his apartment. Pitch calls from the driver's seat. They had borrowed their family's van for the night, agreeing to DD for them, all seeing as they were underage anyway. Though they hadn't agreed without some grumbling. Speak for yourself, Shiro snorts from his seat next to Keith in the back. I did have to drag him out, he says, nudging Keith with his shoulder. Keith grunts but doesn't say anything, instead turning his eyes to the window. They are already deep in the city, headed for downtown. He doesn't come this way often. He's not a big fan of crowds, and downtown is usually full of them. He's just glad he's not driving. It's good for you to get up once in a while. Thanks, Dad. He grumbles half-heartedly, shoving him back. Shira only chuckles. The conversation turns, and Keith finds himself only half-listening. He'd be lying if he said he isn't nervous, and he doubts anyone would believe him if he tried. He hasn't really ever been to a club. In fact, he's barely even been to bars. He's gone to a couple with Shiro and sometimes met in Alora, but they were usually chill bars where they sat in a corner and talked. Sometimes there was live music, but there was never... dancing. Clubs have dancing. Clubs have a DJ and a dance floor, and his friends are all dancers, so he'd be delusional to believe that they wouldn't spend the majority of their time there. Maybe if he looks awkward and helpless enough, some of his friends will take pity on him and stay with him while the others go off to dance. It's not that he doesn't love dancing. Obviously, he loves dancing. He considers dancing to be one of his main passions in life. One of the only things that really makes him happy. One of the things he kind of wants to somehow make a living from. This, this is different. He likes to choreograph. He likes to listen to the music alone, likes to let instinct figure out what moves to use and how they flow together, likes to train and practice and repeat until everything is beaten in a muscle memory and feels natural, and then, only then, does he like to perform in front of a crowd. Even then, he's still a little nervous about performing, but at least at that point, he could trust his body to do what it needs to do. This is different. There are no preset moves to rely on, there's no predictable music, there's no space to perform, it's just people dancing. Even people who have absolutely no rhythm, they just go out there and move like they've known how to do it their entire lives. Keith doesn't know how to do that. Club dancing is a style that he's never really gotten into. It's a lot of just grinding and rolling and moving in ways that are supposed to make you stand out but never really do because everyone is doing the same thing. He doesn't think he can do that on his own, let alone standing up close and personal with his friends who are all probably infinitely better at this than he is, but certainly all more comfortable. Especially Lance. Oh god, Lance is probably fantastic at club dancing. This kind of thing is right up his alley, all freestyle and smooth confidence. 
he is going to look like an idiot. He's going to look like an awkward, stiff idiot with two left feet and a stick rammed so far up his ass, it's breaking his teeth. Why did he agree to come tonight? Surely looking like a loner who doesn't want to hang out with his friends would be better than this. Who was he kidding? He knew he was going to regret it, no matter which decision he made, which is probably why he decided to just suck it up and go along with his friends. At least this way, they can't say that he never tried. Keith's gut is in knots as they pull into the parking lot and climb out of the van. He gazes up at the neon sign above the front doors that reads, Balmera. The parking lot is crowded, and there's a mass of people outside on the outdoor patio smoking. He can hear the dull throb of music from within, breaking through the otherwise peaceful night. He's not sure what expression is on his face as he stares at the club building, anxiety tightening his chest, but it's apparently enough to catch Hunk's attention. He slides up next to Keith as the others climb out of the van and sort themselves out. Have you ever been to a club before? He asks, voice casual but soft enough that the conversation can stay between them. Keith purses his lips together, shaking his head. Hunk chuckles, but it's not the harsh laugh of mockery. It's softer, more sympathetic. Yeah, I've only been to one once. Lance made us go on his 21st birthday. Oh man, that was a crazy time. Keith cocks a small wry smile. I can imagine. Hunk shakes his head. No, no, you don't get it. It was terrible. Lance's girlfriend had just broken up with him, and that was a whole nother can of worms I should have get into. But it was messy, and it left him pretty messed up, so we really shouldn't have taken him to a club. But we're his best friends, so what were we going to say? No, it was his birthday. Hunk's hands are waving around while he narrates. He gets his whole face into it, expressing so many emotions from a past that Keith wasn't a part of, yet feels like he's reliving with him. It reminds him a lot of Lance, to be honest. Perhaps he never noticed, because Lance is always so loud and dramatic enough that it burns Hunk out. Or maybe he's just always too distracted by Lance. So Pete couldn't drink because they were underage, of course, but they were 19 so they could get in, and I am so grateful for that, because I would not have been able to handle Lance on my own. He got drunker than he should have, despite us trying to count his drinks. He kept getting more when we weren't looking. And he kept sneaking off as soon as we turned our backs, just poof, disappears into the crowd. And he was flirting terribly with basically everyone, so we had to keep him from getting too wrapped up with someone or from getting into a fight for flirting with the wrong people. And we tried to help him have a good time, which I think we did despite him being a mess. But Pidge and I were not very impressed by club life. Keith's smile was sympathetic. Understandable. Hunk's laugh is full of bitter humor, the kind that comes from finding a past event amusing only in hindsight. He runs a hand through his hair. Yeah, well, after that, we agreed on the four friend rule. Keith's smile fades as he raises an eyebrow. Four friend rule? Hunk nods. Yeah, four friend rule. He holds up both hands, two fingers up on each. We only go to a club if there's four of us. That way, there's enough for us that we can always pair off. You know, like a buddy system. Keeps everyone safer and from getting lost and from making stupid decisions. Well, mostly anyway. He smiles, and it's warm and comforting, and Keith feels the anxiety in his chest loosen a bit. He feels like he can breathe again. Why are you telling me this? He asks, but despite his blunt question, he's smiling back, and his tone is nothing but curious. Chunk shrugs, holding his head to the side. Just to let you know that we're not crazy club animals. And despite Lance's enthusiasm, he's not really the club type either. This is like a special occasion, which is why we're all so excited. And this time there's seven of us, if you don't count Matt. Plus, I could see you were actually a little nervous, so I want you to know that I am too. But it'll still be fun, because like, we form our own little group. It's just like the seven of us having a party just in a place with other people who are also having a party. If that makes sense. He chuckles softly. I think I get what you mean. Thanks, Hunk. He says, and he means it. Hunk grins, bumping their shoulders enough that Keith stumbles a step. It'll be fun. Promise. Keith can't help but smile at that. Okay. Hey! Lance says, marching toward them from around the hood of the car. Both Keith and Hunk turn to look at him. He glares at Keith, but he can tell there's no real heat there. How come when I say it's going to be fun, you don't believe me, but when Hunk says it, you trust him? He gestures wildly between himself and Hunk as he talks and ends with his hands on his hips, leaning forward slightly to put himself at eye level with Keith. 
Keith just shrugs his small smirk covering his lips. I guess I just trust Honkborn. Lance gasps, loudly leaning back as one hand goes to his chest. Oh, rude! And here I go to all those trust exercises. We're getting us somewhere. Don't take it personally, Lance. Page says, sliding up next to them. They cross their arms over their chest, leaning their head and shoulders lazily against Keith's side. Everyone trusts Hunk more than you. I'm very trustworthy, Lance says, crossing his arms over his chest. Right, Keith, you trust me. Alora even said we're getting better with the trust exercises. That's true. They did, she says, as she, Shiro, and Karen come to join them. You two have made remarkable improvement in the past three weeks. See? He shrugs. I trust you on the dance floor, he says, leaving his tone vague and the statement open-ended, implying that might be the only place he trusts him. It's not true, of course. He hates to admit it, but when it comes right down to it, he would trust Lance in a heartbeat. Doesn't mean he can't watch it and scrap now. And scrap me nuts. His eyes narrow as he looks at Keith, lips twisting into a bounce. He tilts his head inside as he whines, Keith! Keith only grins. Not Keith's fault, Pidge says, and he can feel them shrug against his arm. I mean, have you seen Hunk? Dude's like a big sinner in Who Who wouldn't trust him? Pidge waves a hand towards the large man in question. Coban lifts a finger. Not to mention, Hunk here has the highest record of being right in most situations. Jiro raises an eyebrow, eyeing him curiously. Are you keeping track? Coran only smiles, twisting his mustache as his eyes glint mysteriously. Perhaps. Fine! Lance drawls, throwing himself dramatically under Hunk, leaning against him and throwing an arm over his shoulders. I'll concede, but only because Hunk's my best friend and can confirm that he is indeed a precious and neural and the most trustworthy person I know. Aw, bro. Hunk says, wrapping Lance up in a bone-crushing hug, lifting him off his feet and twisting back and forth, leaving Lance's limbs to dangle awkwardly. He's laughing breathlessly, though, and the rest of them smile. Shiro and Paige lead the way through the parking lot, and the rest of them trail behind. The line is long, but moves quickly, and before he's really ready, they're stepping inside. The employee at the door checks their IDs, gives six of them a wristband, marks a black X on Pidge's hands, and checks their names on the guest list before waving them on. Pidge leads the way with far more confidence than Keith would have expected. Like him, Pidge has never liked crowds. Unlike him, however, they weren't afraid to bully their way through one, despite their short stature. Pidge leads them through the entry halls and into the first room. It's large, dark, and loud. A bar lines the wall, and there are tall tables bolted to the floor and spread around the room. The room is thick with people. Keith thinks they're going to stop at the bar, but Pitch bypasses it, shouldering through the crowd and leaving a small gap for Keith to dart through before the bodies close around it. He puts a hand on Pitch's shoulder to keep them in his sights and feels a hand rest against his back. When he turns, Shiro gives him a small smile before turning and reaching out a hand toward Allura. They make a single file train to follow Pidge. They pass through a second room with pool tables, dartboards, and cornhole boards. The room is less crowded than the others, but all the game stations are taken. It's easier to navigate. They enter a wide hallway and pass by several open doorways. One leads to an outer courtyard that seems to be sporting its own bar on the far side, but it's honestly hard to tell with the sheer mass of people out there. They pass another door that undoubtedly leads to the main dance floor. Keith glances inside as they pass. It's dark with flashing lights that give glimpses of grinding and writhing bodies. Music blasts from the room and Keith can feel the thump of the bass in his feet pulsing up through his chest. He gulps, hand instinctively tightening on Pidge's shoulder. But Pidge keeps walking and he's a little surprised to feel Pidge's hand covering his, giving his fingers a small squeeze. They finally stop when they reach a room toward the back of the complex. The room is significantly less crowded. There is a bar along one wall and several tall tables scattered close by on the outer edges of the room. There are also couches with low coffee tables between them. It looks more like a lounge than any other room in the club that he's seen so far. The music is significantly softer here, though we can still feel it pounding and pulsing like a heartbeat throughout the entirety of the club. How do you know where you're going? 
Heath asks when they finally come to a stop and the group starts to gather in a small circle. Finch shrugs. I came here with Matt earlier in the week when he came to see the setup. They turn to face the group, setting their hands on their hips. All right, so the manager said this is the least crowded room in the whole place. So I vote we use it as our base of operations. You lose the group? Come here. It'll be the meetup spot. Agreed? There are nods around the group, and Shiro glances at the watch on his wrist. He has to actively resist the urge to roll his eyes. Seriously? A watch? Who wears a watch anymore, Shiro? Old people, that's it. His brother is dressed handsomely, though, with well-fitting dark jeans and a black button-up that has the sleeves rolled up to his elbows and is open to reveal a tight v-neck. Watch or not, he doesn't look old. Matt should have taken over the DJ booth about half an hour ago, he says. Laura puts a hand on his shoulder, giving him a small smile, then he turns to look at her. Perhaps we should give him a little longer to settle in before we make our appearance. You ruin all my fun, Shiro says with a light smile. Laura gives him a quick wink and a smirk. Someone else to keep you in line. And while Shiro manages to keep a steady expression, Keith can see her breaking down under the weight of Laura's gaze. He can see the way his brother's hand flexes, the way his prosthetic taps against his thigh, the way a blush lights up his cheeks, putting his scar in stark relief. He can't really blame him. Alora is damn gorgeous. She dressed up for the evening with a light blue dress that hangs off her shoulders, her hair half pinned up with pins and beads and silver white tendrils that fell to frame her face. He wonders if they had gone through with their bargain and if Lance had actually done Alora's hair. He hadn't thought to ask, but if that had been Lance, well, Keith is impressed. All right, Lance says, clapping his hands together loudly and drawing the attention to him. He takes a moment to sweep his gaze around the group, grinning. While we wait, I'm going to get drinks. Oh, yeah, let's get our drink on. Then deadpans with monotone enthusiasm. Lance laughs, ruffling the air. Next year, short stuff. Pitch slaps his hand away, and Lance snatches them back to his chest quickly. What up, Beanpo? Hey, calm down! He throws an arm over Pitch's shoulder and leans in close, putting a hand up to his mouth hole, whispering loudly, We'll sneak you some more drinks while Shiro isn't looking! Lance? Shiro levels a look at them both. Lance throws his hands up in the air, doing his best and failing to hide his smile. What? I didn't say anything! Shiro continues to stare at him, and Lance fidgets under his gaze. He darts behind Pidge and makes a laughable attempt to hide. Pidge, protect me from Dad! Pidge crosses their arms over their chest and rolls their eyes. I'll make sure I'm sober by the time we leave, they say, meeting Shiro's eyes with a challenge as if daring him to try and stop them. He looks like he just might try. But then Alora is slipping her arm around Shiro's, pressing herself against his arm as she looks around him to where Koran is standing. Koran, do you think they have any decent whiskey? Perhaps you can convince the bartender to make that drink you wanted Shiro to try. Koran's eyes sparkle as he stands up straight, snapping his fingers. Ow! Boys! Don't drink! Let's find out, shall we? He swoops in and wraps an arm around Shiro's other arm, turning him with Alora's help to tug him toward the bar. It's a concoction of my grandfather's own design. He called it the hair tonic because it's bound to put some hair on your chest. As he and Alora drag Shiro away toward the bar, Alora glances over her shoulder, giving them a smile and a wink. Paige grins, and Lance gives her a max salute. After they all get drinks, the seven of them claim two couches facing each other across a coffee table at the far end of the room. The characters aren't exactly big, and it's a tight fit, but they make it work. Shiro, Alora, and Koran take one couch, while Keith, Lance, and Hunk take the other. Pidge perches themselves on the arm of the chair next to Hunk, leaning against his arm. Keith tries to ignore the fact that Lance is pressed right up against him, leg to leg and arm to arm. He rests an elbow on the arm of the couch and tries to lean away from him as much as he can without being too obvious. Touching Lance has gotten easier since they started taking lessons with Shiro and Alora, but the casual touches outside of practice still make his stomach twist in knots. He hates it, and he can't wait for this stupid infatuation to pass, and it will pass because it always does. It's not the first time he's found himself unexplainably attracted to someone, and it's not the first time he's ignored those feelings until they went away. It's just easier this way, especially since Lance is now not only his dance partner, but his friend. 
He's not about to sacrifice his new friend group just because his hormones decided to wake up and give him his yearly crush. Except it's not a crush, it's just the potential for crush. He's not letting it progress that far. He refuses. Unfortunately, in the meantime, he's just going to have to deal with the fact that Lance's touch sends electricity shooting through his veins, that his smile makes his stomach do somersaults, that his laugh makes something tighten in his chest. All physical responses. Physical responses could be overcome. Mind over matter, right? So what if he likes to push Lance's buttons to see him rile up? It's cute, yeah, but it's also hilarious. So what if he'll go out of his way to do nice things for Lance, to make him smile? That's what friends do. They make each other happy. So what if he looks forward to Wednesdays because Shiro and Alora's synergy lessons give him an excuse to be close to Lance? So what if... Oh, man. He's got it bad, doesn't he? Hey! He jerks when Lance's voice is suddenly right in his ear, breath warm against his cheek. He had been attempting to pay attention to whatever Alora and Garan were talking about across from him, but he hadn't realized how much he had zoned out. He leans away to put some distance between them before half turning to look at Lance. His brows are furrowed and his lips are curled into a small frown. What? You okay, dude? Keith frowned, one hand curling into a fist on his leg. Why wouldn't I be? Okay, that came out a little more defensive than he would have liked. Lance's frown deepens and his eyes search Keith's face. He really hopes he's not watching. I don't know, but you're all stiff and twitchy. I am not. He raises an eyebrow. You're really going to deny it? He uses his free hand to point to Keith's leg, the one that's pressed up against his. It's bouncing. Keith immediately stops. Usually, I'm the one who can't sit still. Keith grunts and turns away, lifting his cup to his lips to sip. It's a simple rum and coke, but he had ordered it strong. He felt like he'd need it. The burn at the back of his throat is sadly comforting. Lance isn't quite done with him. Not a club person? Keith snorts. What gave it away? Do you want that list alphabetically or chronologically? I'm so proud of you for using that word correctly. I'm a learned man, Keith, a man of many talents. Is one of those talents looking like an idiot? Keith asks, gesturing to the multitude of glow bracelets hanging on his wrists over his usual bracelets and wrapped around his neck. They're not glowing very well in the lining of the lounge room. They look sickly and dull. Hey! Go knock the glow bracelets, dude! Lance says, pointing a finger at Keith. He glares at him, a finger an inch from his cheek. Then, with the shadow of an amused smirk breaking through his mock frown, he shifts his finger forward to poke Keith's nose. Stop that! Keith snaps, slapping his hand away and wrinkling his nose. Lance smiles at that, cocking his head to the side as he chuckles. They're leaning in close, which isn't too hard given their proximity on the couch, and Lance seems to be making an effort to keep the conversation between them. No one's made a move to intrude, and while Keith catches Shiro's curious glance, he doesn't say anything. Seriously, though, if you're good tonight, maybe I can consider giving you one, he says, voice aloof as he dangles a wrist in front of Keith. Keith snorts, rolling his eyes. No thanks. But he's smiling. It's small, a mere tilt of his lips, but it's there. Mind my words, Kogan, and by the end of the night, I'm going to get you to wear one of these, he says with his signature smirk. I'll take them, but you sure? I've already gotten everyone else to wear one, he says, grin widening. He sits back, one arm crossed over his chest as he sips his drink. Even sure went pitch. He rolls his eyes. There's no way. But as he glances across to his brother, sure enough, there's a purple glow necklace around his neck. Keith lifts an eyebrow as he deadpans. Seriously? Shiro manages to look sheepish as he shrugs. Alora oh, was persuasive. You're weak. Shiro shrugs, but doesn't deny it as he hides his face behind his cup. Keith isn't sure if he got whatever drink Coran was talking about. But judging from the look on his face when he takes a sip, he's going to go with yes. Lance, Hunk, and Alora have the most glow bracelets, and they've been wearing them since Keith was picked up. He's not surprised about Lance and Hunk. This is exactly the kind of thing Lance would think of, and Hunk is good-natured enough to go along with it. 
Alora he's a little surprised about, but he probably shouldn't be, despite her elegance and beauty. She's a child at art and is easily wrapped up in Lance's ideas if she thinks they'll be fun. Karan gained a few bracelets and a necklace shortly after getting into the van. He was nearly as enthusiastic about getting them as Hunk was about giving them. Heath, Shiro, and Pitch, however, had declined. At least that's what he had thought. He should have known the he should have known Shiro would cave the moment Alora got involved. Pidge, however, is made of tougher stuff. Pidge? He asks, leaning forward to look at them, perched on the far end of the couch. Pidge's smile is small and a little apologetic as they lift a hand and present their wrists where there are two green glow bracelets. Sorry, Keith! How got me? Keith glares. I feel betrayed. Pidge rolls their eyes. That was in a manic. We're here to have fun! That one's more fun than glove bracelets, Lance says, grinning. I like them. They kind of make us stick out as a squad, Hunk says, rubbing the back of his neck. We're here to have fun with friends after all. He gives Keith a genuine smile and, okay, he can see how Paige broke so easily to Hunk. Still, Lance is watching him and Keith isn't going to cave just yet. Besides, Hunk brought up a good point. The more ridiculous we look, the more it'll embarrass Matt. Pidge's smile is devious, and Keith finds himself with a similar smirk. They have a good point. Matt is just as much family as Pidge is. He's an honorary older brother, and as such, it's Keith's job to embarrass him. Fair enough. So you only run? Lance asks, nudging him with his shoulder. Not on your life. Oh, come on, Keith! Lance continues to bug him, and Keith makes a point of ignoring him by talking to everyone else. Lance complains, leaning into Keith and practically begging for his attention while Keith tries his best to hold a straight face as he talks loudly to the others. It doesn't take long for Lance to switch to draping himself against Hunk, who takes Keith's cue to ignore Lance in order to talk animatedly to Valora. He tries leaning across Hunk to poke at Pidge, but Pidge ignores him in favor of leaning forward to talk loudly to Keith about a new alien documentary that's supposed to come out. Lance is dramatic, but his antics make everyone smile through the indifferent masks they're trying to hold, and even Lance is having a hard time keeping up his pouting facade. When he leans across Keith's lap to lean against the arm of the couch in order to stretch his legs out across Hunk, Keith really hopes the warmth rising to his cheeks is invisible. Either way, he catches Shiro's eye, and his brother leans back, resting one foot over the other knee as he sips his drink, waggling his eyebrows and smiling knowingly. Keith glares daggers at him. When they're all finished with their drinks, Pidge and Shiro waste no time rushing people up and ushering them all out of the room and toward the source of the club's music, the dance floor. Keith's nerves have subsided for the most part, what with Lance's dramatics and the warm buzz of rum in his system, but it's starting to come back, leaking into his system and coiling low in his gut. But then Lance is there, draping his arm across Keith's shoulders and hugging him close with a casual squeeze. Relax, John Stamos, he says lightly. Keith glances up at him, eyebrows raised. You know, that's another one I don't really mind. Lance's grin is small and sincere. Yeah, I had a feeling. You got that 80s bad boy vibe. I'm not sure if that's a compliment or not. You know what? Neither am I. He laughs, but the sound is drowned out as they turn the corner and step into the dance room. It's dark, with flashing lights that light up and throw the writhing crowd into silhouettes. Keith feels immediately engulfed in the atmosphere, nearly suffocated by it. The air here is heavy and warm, and the energy is thick enough to pick up with a knife. The music is music he vaguely recognizes from the stuff he's gotten from Matt, but it's pounding down through his body, rattling his bones, and driving his heart rate through the roof. He nearly turns right around, but Lance's arm is still around his shoulders and hugging him after their friends. His legs feel numb and rigid as he blindly follows. As they push along the outskirts of the crowd, Lance's arm drops to push ahead of him a little, shouldering people aside in Garan's wake. But his hand remains on Keith's arm, tugging him ever onward. As the body is pressing close, he finds himself leaning toward Lance. Much to Keith's gratitude, Lance doesn't bring it up. The DJ booth is halfway along one of the sidewalls, elevated a few steps above the floor. 
They can only see the edges of Matt's equipment peeking over the top of the booth, but they can see him clearly. He's standing over his equipment, eyes focused on it with an intensity and single-minded concentration that he often sees in pitch. In all honesty, the two siblings look incredibly alike. Matt's taller, with a little more of a masculine build and cut to his face, but their hair is styled nearly the same, with the exact same copper-orange color. Not to mention, their eyes are exactly the same. Amber, bright with intellect, wide with curiosity, sharp with analysis, and soft with unwavering loyalty. The only difference is that Pitch can't quite hide the mischievous air about them, and Matt is much more laid-back and open. He has his headphones on, making his hair stand up in more angles than it does usually, and his head is bobbing along with the beat as his hands adjust levels on the boards they can't see. They stop in front of the booth, a little to the side, and huddle into a group. He hasn't noticed them yet, and Keith doubts he will until they make their presence known. He can imagine the crowd just kind of blurs into the background when you're up there. Heck, the crowd is blurring for him, and he's in it! All right, Paige says, eyeing their brother before looking around the group. A smirk decorates their lips, crinkling their eyes as they reach into one of the bigger pockets of their pants and pull out a large, folded piece of paper. Let's do this! No holding back! I want to see him thoroughly embarrassed! No excuses! They systematically and carefully unfold the paper to reveal a large poster with the words, That DJ nerd is my brother! written out in large black letters in a horrendously vibrant paint that glows in the black lights around the club. In the dim lighting, he can't even see the creases from it being folded for so long. Where were you even keeping that? Keith asks, eyeing them curiously. They shrug. These pants have big pockets. Is that glitter? Lance asks, leaning in close to inspect the poster. Pidge is grinning. Damn right it is. It was Hugs idea. Lance leans back, nodding, as he reaches out to pant Hug's arm. Nice arm, buddy! Hug crosses his arms over his chest, smiling. Thanks. I wasn't sure if you'd be able to see it in this lighting, but I thought it was worth a shot. It's a nice touch. Lance agrees. Laura is chuckling, hiding her smile behind her aunt. Absolutely brilliant craftsmanship, Paige. Karan idly twirls his mustache, one arm crossed over his chest as he grins. All oh, great! Absolutely impeccable! Pidge gives a small bow. Hi, Trent. Shiro looks over the sign, rubbing his chin thoughtfully. It's completely horrendous. He deadpans, and then a wide grin slowly overtakes his lips. I love it. Pidge is waving. I know you would. And then they set to work embarrassing Max. At Shiro's cue, and following Pidge's lead, they all step forward and start squealing, voices high in Pidge. Pidge climbs up on the hug's shoulders and holds the sign above their head while they scream, That nerd is my brother! That's my brother! Matt's head snaps up and the winding of his eyes is absolutely hilarious. His mouth drops open as he gapes at them in horror. He freezes one hand on his headset and the other hovering above the buttons on his board. With his hands on Pidge's legs to keep them balanced, Hunk dances side to side, swiveling his hips and jostling Pidge. Shiro links his fingers together and puts them under his chin, putting his knee together as he squats a little, letting out the highest pitch squeal Keith has ever heard from him. He wiggles around like something straight out of a cartoon as he makes faces at Matt. He's supposed to be embarrassing his roommate, but honestly, Keith is feeling it just as hard. Lance and Alora lock hands, jumping up and down and squealing as they point to Matt and giggle loudly. Then they both dramatically swoon, hands to the chests and foreheads. Legs straight as a board, they fall backwards. Alora falls right into Coran's spreading arms, who catches her, lets her lean against his chest, and throws a hand of his own to his forehead, declaring things about Matt in a loud, overly dramatic voice. Lance falls right for Keith, and if it weren't for their weekly trust exercises, he might not have caught him in time. But the way he steps forward to catch Lance under the arms is completely automatic and without hesitation. Lance tilts his head back, breaking character for a moment to run up with him. Now I can trust you, partner, he says with a wink, and Keith feels himself stiff and hard, hammering in his chest as his breath itches. But Lance is already standing up on his own again and joining in with the others to continue their antics. After several moments of this, 
Matt finally breaks out of his shock. <laughs> he sighs, and Boba can't hear it. They can see it in the way his shoulders sag. He puts it into his face, covering most of it as he turns away, but Keith can see the telltale signs of a smile there. It's not long before he has to get back to his work, though, and he waves them off, half an eye on his equipment and his computer screen. I love you, bro! Paige yells loud enough to be heard, brandishing their sign for the last time. He flips them off, but he's laughing. Once the sign is folded and once again stuffed into their pocket, the group heads deeper into the crowd. Keith follows close behind, chest clenched tight and breaths coming short and shallow. They manage to carve out a section of the dance floor for themselves, standing around and forming a small circle. As it turns out, it's not as bad as Keith was anticipating. The group stands in a circle, movement running through them as they feel for the beat, during which Keith feels far too stiff. But then Lance steps forward and starts doing the sprinkler, complete with a hand behind his head and the other outstretched, moving in ticks with the beat. He makes faces at Hunk across the circle, and he laughs before joining in. It's not long before everyone joins in with a ridiculous dance move, Pidge bumping Keith's hip until he reluctantly rolls with it. When all of their sprinklers reset at the same time, and they all make various sprinkler sounds, Keith can't help but laugh. And just like that, the tension he feels breaks. Somehow, unspoken, a game is formed. They go around the circle, taking turns coming up with some novelty dance move that the others then all have to copy. Since it started with Lance, it moves on to Alora at his other side. She doesn't miss a beat before putting her hands out like she's swimming, going a few times before plugging up her nose and wiggling an arm in the air and sinking a little with bent knees. Karan does cliché disco moves. Hunk does the running man. Shiro does the monkey. Paige does the robot, though they do it significantly worse and more cliché than everyone knows they can. When it gets to Keith, he panics for a moment, looking around at all the smiling and expectant eyes before hesitantly doing the cabbage patch. Lance throws back his head and laughs, getting into it and bumping Keith's hip with his own. His cheeks hurt from smiling. He wonders why he ever expected everyone to be into typical club dancing. His group of friends, they're more into having fun than showing off. They dance seriously on a near daily basis. This is for fun, and they make it show. And with the way their tight circle is formed, backs to the crowd around them, it's like they're in their own little island in a sea of strangers. Heath can effectively block everyone else out and just relax with his friends. The game goes on, and when they run out of known novelty dances, they start making things up. The songs change, a mix of Matt's remixes of popular songs, as well as some of his originals mixed in there. Keith doesn't recognize all of it, but it all has the same feel. The vibe that drives them forward keeps their body moving of its own accord, a beat that's forever pounding onward. Eventually, the game dissolves along with their circle, and they start dancing in a way that Keith had feared, but it turns out to not be that bad. Lance and Pidge somehow end up next to each other and dance together in a style that is so completely Pidge. Quick, precise movements that are jagged yet flow into each other. Keith is a little impressed. He didn't think Lance could dance like that. He's actually pretty good. Alora and Karan end up dancing together in wild, spinning, dramatic motions that forces other people away to make space for them. Karan is just as wild and energetic as the other times Keith has seen her dance, and Alora keeps up beautifully, adding her own grace that's so definably hers. Shiro and Hunk show up on either side of him, nudging his hip with their own. Neither of them are dancing anything crazy. They're just bobbing back and forth, shifting their weight with the beat, and just letting it control their movements in subtle but sure ways. Keith takes their lead. It's barely dancing compared to what they usually do. It's just kind of moving to the beat, but any movement keeps them from standing out. And truth be told, it's difficult not to move at all. The beat is driving, singing in his veins and practically begging him to move to some degree, hugging on his strings to sway his body and bob his head. He's not sure what to do with his arms, so he lets them mostly hang at his sides, moving them in small movements as he mimics Hunk. Shiro starts dancing the twist, and Keith groans loudly, throwing his head back and running his hands down his face. Hunk is laughing, and it's not long before he's copying Shiro. 
They crowd him until he has no choice but to relent laughing as he does so. At some point, Shiro and Alora split off from the group, dancing close and sensual with the music, bodies rolling together and sharing gentle caresses. They maintain eye contact for most of it. It's tender and somehow manages to be sweet and lack any of the raunchy atmosphere that surrounds some of the other dancers around them. Still, somehow, they make it a private moment that feels inappropriate to intrude on, so the rest of their group turns their eyes away and lets them have it to themselves. Keith watches with amusement as Paige attempts to teach Karan some of their robotic dance moves, which he's not bad at, but certainly lacks some of the fluidity that Pidge embodies. Movement catches his eye as Lance bends in half, scooting backwards in large movements as he bounces until he's hilariously rubbing his ass on Hunk. The big guy just laughs, attempting to shove Lance away, but his shaking ass is persistent. Keith laughs, unable to hold it back. The sound is drowned out in the general noise that fills the dance floor, but Lance seems to notice anyway. With a mischievous look, he turns his attention to Keith and waggles his eyebrows as he straightens. He makes a motion like twirling a lasso and throws it at Keith, who just stares at him, unimpressed. Lance, not one to be deterred when Keith stands still, instead jerks forward with every phantom pull on the invisible rope. He does this until he's right in front of him, grinning widely and though he thrives. Keith can't quite smother his amused smirk. Then he's suddenly sidling further forward, hands reaching out to grab hold of Keith's hips. His touch isn't hesitant, but it's light and gentle, and if it weren't for the warmth of his palms and the slight pressure of his fingers, Keith wouldn't doubt he was touching him at all. For a moment, he forgets how to breathe. Lance leans forward, a breath tickling the hair by his ears when he speaks. You need to relax, he says, voice pitched far too low for comfort. It makes something in Keith's chest tighten, a shiver running on his spine to curl his toes. They have been this close before, especially with Shiro and Alora's weekly lessons, but this is different. They aren't practicing choreography, they're just existing together. Here, it's a conscious choice on Lance's part to be this close to him, and it's making thinking difficult. So Keith pulls back. Not physically. He doesn't think he can pull back physically. But he pulls back mentally, stuffing down his chaotic emotions for a moment as a scowl hurts his expression. Or at least he tries to scowl. Judging from Lance's reaction, it might have come out as more of a bout. I am relaxed, he says defensively. Lance had already leaned back to look at him, a small smile playing across his lips, but at that, he tosses his head back and laughs. His grip on Keith's hips tightened as he puts forth effort to wiggle them back and forth. You're still so stiff, he says, eyes finding kids. They're dark in the dim lighting, but every once in a while, one of the flashing lights will catch them, reflecting brightly and giving dazzling depth to his irises. He's still smirking, but there's an edge of amused fondness there that Keith doesn't know what to do with, so he just frowns. I am not. You are, Lance argues, releasing his hips to step back. Keith tries not to mourn the loss of his touch. Then Lance is suddenly grabbing his wrist, stepping to his side and holding out his free arm. He starts a rolling motion there, rolling a wave along his arm, his shoulders, down his other arm, and into Keith's. When Keith doesn't move, his shoulders hunch and he pouts. Keith! You'll let the wave die! You can't let the wave die! And Keith chuckles because it's so absurd and ridiculous and so completely planned! He goes again, and this time, Keith rolls the wave through both arms, pausing, and then rolling it back. Lance laughs as it goes through him, and when it reaches his extended free arm, he throws an invisible wave at Hunk, who catches it without hesitation and rolls it through his own body. They throw it around the group like it's a living thing, getting more and more dramatic and big with their actions as it goes on until they're laughing too hard to keep it going. At some point, they end up forming a circle again, widening it so they can take turns dancing in the middle. As the people around them catch on, the circle ends up widening, more and more people joining. All of his friends take turns dancing in the circle. Keith, however, refrains, and whenever someone nudges him, he shakes his head and smiles apologetically. Then someone else takes the floor, and he's forgotten. Luckily, his friends don't push him too hard. They all either know he's uncomfortable with it, or they pick up on it pretty quickly. He knows it's for fun, and it's just around his friends and people he'll probably never see again, but he just... They didn't get himself to take to the circle. It's just...
Not his thing, and as much as he would like to be able to relax enough to just wing it, his thoughts are too loud and paralyze his body, keeping him from just doing it. He'll need a lot more alcohol before he's that comfortable. Lance, however, is absolutely living. He dives into the circle as often as he can while still giving others a chance, even going so far as to have a dance-off with several people. This is his element, and this is where he shines, beneath the flashing colored club lights surrounded by people cheering him on where freestyle reigns king. And here, Lance is king, and Keith can do nothing but watch, knowing he'll never be able to touch that light. It's some point during Koran's turn, in which he spins around the wide end of circle, legs kicked out, toes bent in ways they shouldn't, and going up and dropping to his knees in such quick succession that it leaves the crowd in awe when Lance tugs at his arm. Keith doesn't resist, unable to, as Lance practically drags him through the crowd. And that's how they end up back at the lounge, leaning against the bar as they order another round of drinks. Keith is grateful for the change of scenery, but we can't help but wonder why Lance dragged him of all people with him. He knows of the buddy system from Hunk, but he didn't think Lance would choose him as his drinking buddy. He wonders if Lance sensed that he needed a break. Is that too much wishful thinking? Keith isn't sure. He takes a long swig of his rum and coke as soon as it's set in front of him. All this thinking is making his head hurt. Why can't he just have a fun night out with his friends without thinking himself in circles around Lance? Infatuation sucks! How can you drink then? Lance asks, leaning both elbows on the bar counter as he sips his drink. As he's leaned forward, he has one foot propped up on the low bar that runs along the bottom of the bar. His lips are quirked at one side, giving Keith the smallest of smirks. Keith shrugs, turning to lean his back against the bar, one elbow bent to rest on it behind him. It's simple, easy, and tastes good. He says, looking down at his drink, swirling it around the plastic cup. Lance snorts, eyeing him over the rim of his own plastic cup to hide his smile. It's just cheap rum and coke, dude! Keith nods once and repeats. It's simple, easy, and tastes good. Then he eyes Lance sideways, his own smirk crawling its way onto his lips. Besides, it's better than your drink. Well, um, excuse? He says, lifting his cup a fraction and gesturing poor Keith with it. Vodka cranberry is a classic! So is rum and coke. Yeah, but cranberries are more fruity and delicious and good for you. But vodka tastes like rubbing alcohol. Ah, but it's ingeniously hidden by the cranberry juice! Keith's lip curls. I doubt that. No, trust me, try it! He practically shoves his drink into Keith's hand. So he does as he's been and takes a sip. His lip curls further as he shoves it back, coughing slightly. I stand by what I said. You're not fun! Your drink is so boring! So is yours. Lance looks at his cup, brows furrowing in thought as his lip twists. I suppose you're right. His head snaps up and a smile returning. Wish you'd order a fun drink next! Keith raises an eyebrow, skeptical. I don't really know many fun drinks. Lance sighs, dropping his forehead to his arms on the bar. Oh my god, Keith, where's your sense of adventure? I didn't say I wouldn't. I just said I didn't know any fun drinks. Then he leans over and nudges Lance's hip with his own. When he pulls back, he doesn't go very far. You pick something for me. Lance lifts his head at that, smiling. You're on! Nothing gross, please. I would never! And his face takes on a thoughtful expression, tapping his chin with a free finger. Keith waits, sipping his drink and letting his gaze roam over the lounge. It's more full than it was before, but nowhere close to the other rooms closer to the front of the club. He doesn't spot any of their friends, but there are plenty of strangers crowding the bar. It just gives him an excuse to be this close to Lance. I got it! He says, snapping his fingers and pointing at Keith. A blue motorcycle! Keith raises an eyebrow, looking back at him. A blue motorcycle? Yeah! He's gaining. You like motorcycles, yeah? Keith nods hesitantly. So you should have a drink with motorcycle in the name! What's in it? He asks, skeptical. Lance shrugs. I don't know. A little bit of this, a little of that. I just know it has some blue liquor and tequila, but it's good, trust me. Keith isn't sure if his trust in Lance extends as far as drinks, but he'll give it a shot anyway. What are you going to get? He grins. A Long Island iced tea. 
those that even have any alcohol. Lance laughs, shoving him lightly. Yes, it does, you ass! He lifts his cup, eyes blinding over the top of it. Raise ya! He lifts his cup. You're on. Lance finishes chugging his drink first, and Keith blames it on the fact that he's chugging soda, and Lance is chugging juice. They order their new drinks, and Keith is pleasantly surprised, but he puts on a show of being skeptical just to watch Lance squirm. He loses track of time. They hang out at the bar instead of going to the couches. A couple of their friends come and go, grabbing a drink and chatting before heading back to the dance floor. Lance and Keith stay. They talk about a lot of things, and a lot of nothing, shoving each other playfully, and eventually getting to the point where the bar is crowded enough that their arms press up against each other. Neither of them make to move. They go through several more drinks, and Keith is feeling it. It blurs the edges of his vision, making it harder to focus, flushes his cheeks, makes him more honest and talkative, and makes his limbs feel like they're slightly detached. Numb. Lance doesn't seem to be faring much better. They're in the middle of an argument over who has a higher tolerance when Lance suddenly just stops talking mid-sentence. It's so abrupt that it catches Keith's attention. He looks up from where he had been about to take a sip from his cup, eyebrows raised curiously. Lance is standing there, eyes wide and focused on something over Keith's shoulder. His jaw has gone slack, lips parted as pure shock is written across his features. Keith's brow furrows, lips pursing into a small frown. He turns his head, but he doesn't see anything besides people. No one he recognizes, and certainly nothing strange enough to warrant that reaction. He looks back, but Lance hasn't moved. If he has to guess, he'd say Lance doesn't seem to be breathing. It's not just shock or surprise. There's something akin to fear in his eyes. A level of vulnerability that Keith isn't used to seeing with him. It worries him, and he feels something clench in his gut. Lance, he says, voice soft and uncertain, then louder, waving a hand in front of his face. Lance! That snaps him out of it, his eyes darting back to Keith's and refocusing. His jaw snaps shut, and he's frowning. He opens his mouth a couple of times like he's trying to speak, but he's not sure what he wants to say. When he does finally manage to find words, his voice is carefully neutral and barely hiding the waver that is there. Sorry, I, uh, I need to go. He comes out rushed, choppy, and he shoves himself away from the bar in his half-empty cup. He barely gets a step before Keith grabs hold of his arm, yanking him to a stop. Lance turns, eyes wide and face so full of barely contained emotions, each passing over his features too fast and colliding together, leaving them unidentifiable. Keith frowns, eyes hard and searching. Lance, what's wrong? Nothing, it's... it's nothing! He carefully and systematically removes Keith's grip from his arm, smiling apologetically as he's already stepping away. I just... I need to find Hunk now, I'll be... It's fine, I'll see you later, yeah? He's already turning away from him, hiding whatever is playing across his face, and he dives into the crowd with a frantic urgency that leaves Keith reeling, staring after him and frozen in surprise. He isn't sure how long he stands there, but it's long enough for people to start jostling him around, trying to reach the bar. He frowns, brows furrowing as he stares down at his drink. He doesn't want it anymore. The taste has soured in his mouth at Lance's abrupt departure. They had been having fun. He had, he had actually been enjoying himself. And while he knows enough to doubt he was the cause of whatever freak Lance out, it bothered him that Lance hadn't even told him what was wrong. He had just left. Were they bonding? Why didn't Lance trust him with, with whatever that was? He grits his teeth, fingers tightening on the cup as he downs the rest of his drink. It's tasteless and burns more than it should, but he had paid for it, so he might as well. Once he's done, he leaves the cup on the bar and goes to search for Lance. He finds Shiro first. His brother has been led up into the DJ booth, and Matt is busy showing him everything. Keith can see the smile on his face while he proudly points out this and that, lips moving, but words lost on Keith. Shiro watches, his own set of headphones on, as he follows Matt's gestures with his eyes. He looks impressed. Keith waves his hand to catch their attention, and Shiro leans down, removing one side of the headphones to hear Keith as she shouts up at him. He asks if he's seen Lance, but he has to ask several times before Shiro understands him. 
He ends up shaking his head, but points out where Alora and Corbin are. He gives Keith a curious look, but Keith waves him off before turning to leave. Alora and Corbin are standing along the edges of the room, drinks in hand, and leaning against the wall as they talk. They both look up, smiling brightly as Keith approaches. He tries to smile back, but he's not feeling it. He asks if they've seen Lance, and their expressions drop a fraction. Corbin explains that he had just come by and grabbed Hunk before towing him out of the room and that he looked upset. Alora tells him to check the bathroom, and so he does. Turns out the club has several sets of bathrooms scattered around, and not only does it take him a while to find them, but Lance isn't in the first one he tries, or the second. He finds Paige outside the third, leaning against the wall between the men's and women's rooms, arms crossed over their chest, and a deep scowl on their face. They glare daggers at everyone that passes, holding eye contact until they look away. Out of context, it looks like Paige is having a bad night. With the knowledge that Lance is probably in the bathroom, they look more like a pissed off bodyguard, and their small size doesn't detract from that in the slightest. Their expression is unchanging when they spy Keith. Oi, he says, coming to a stop in front of them. They grunt, lifting their chin of fraction and greeting. Hey! Keith nods towards the bathroom door. Lance in there. Paige tilts their chin down just the fraction, but it effectively darkens their expression. Yes! Keith takes a step towards it, reaching out. Don't! The sharp edge of their tone stops him in his tracks, and he freezes with one hand on the door. He turns to look at them, brows furrowing. They're holding his gaze, eyes hard and brass pinched. Their lips are scrunched up into a small frown, and Keith knows that look. Pinch is pissed off! but they're also protective, ready to pounce on anything that might threaten whatever they're protecting. In this case, Lance. They stare at each other, neither of them budging, until someone tries to push past Keith. He steps aside as the guy pushes into the bathroom. Keith just gets a glimpse of a tiled corner and not the bathroom himself. He doesn't see Lance, but he catches his voice and hunks before the door closes and their words are once again lost and voices muffled. Keith steps over to Pidge, mirroring their stance against the wall, crossing his arms over his chest. What's going on, Pidge? He asks, and for a moment he thinks they're going to resist, but then they sigh, shoulders sagging. That's... it's not really my place to say. Pidge. Look, I know you're worried. No, don't deny it, Keith. I can see it on your face. We're all worried. The thing is... Lance saw someone here that he really wasn't prepared to see... And none of us were expecting to see any time soon, and she fucked him up pretty bad. He bristles, back stiffening against the wall. It feels cold even through his shirt. He feels cold, and it's an odd contrast to the warmth of the club and the alcohol running through his veins. It's an ex-girlfriend, isn't it? He tries to keep his tone casual and neutral, but it comes out far too soft and rigid to be either. And nods once. Yeah, it is. Is this the one that Hunk said broke up with him before his 21st birthday? He's looking at them, so he sees when Pidge's lips curled into a small wry smile. Hunk, I told you about that! Keith shrugs, the movement causing his arm to rub against Pidge's. They lean into his touch, seeking comfort. He leans toward them, too. Only a little. He was telling me about your first club experience. Ah, that, yeah, not a fun time! So he said. There's a long pause before he manages to say, so, this ex-girlfriend? Pidge's smile instantly drops, face darkening. Don't be fooled. He's over her and has been for a while, but... She did some pretty nasty things. He was too attached. They were terrible at communicating and it ended badly. I messed him up pretty bad for a while, but he's gotten better. It's just... He wasn't prepared to see her. It caught him off guard and brought a lot of bad things to the surface. Maybe I can... No! Pidge says sharply, cutting him off. They shake their head, sighing and continuing in a softer tone. He just... He needs a moment, Keith. He doesn't want anyone to see him like this. He doesn't want you to think bad of him. Wouldn't. I know, Keith, but... Just let him have a moment to compose himself. I'll come find us when he's ready. Keith sighs, looking away. Fine. He understands. He really does. But that doesn't stop him from wanting to shove his way in there and... He's not even sure what he'd do. What can he do? He doesn't know how to comfort people, let alone Lance. 
He doesn't know what Lance needs or what would make him feel better. But the memory of Lance's face is drifting through his mind, and he hates seeing Lance like that. Still, he knows there's nothing he can do about it. Truth be told, he wants to go find his ex-girlfriend and get a good look at whatever monster could make Lance, beautiful, shining, smiling Lance, look like that! And maybe punch her in the face! But that could just be the alcohol talking. Perhaps he has some protective instincts after all. He'd certainly feel like punching whoever managed to hurt Pedro Shiro or even Matt. He doesn't like seeing anyone hurt his friends, even if it happened long before he met them. Like it or not, and all infatuation aside, Lance is his friend. Though, it might be the infatuation mixed with the alcohol that makes him feel like he'd do anything in order to see Lance smile again. But he'll have to wait until Lance is ready. He hates waiting. Any specific reason why you're waiting out here? He asks. Pete shrugs. Not really. There's that small wry smile again. Maybe I'm hoping Naima will go to the bathroom so I can give her a piece of my mind. Should we wait somewhere else to give Lance some space until he's ready? Lance just sighs then, whole body slumping. Yeah, I guess. I'm just... I'm worried. Keith puts an arm around their shoulders, pulling them to his side. Me too. There's a long silence, and even though they had both agreed that they shouldn't be waiting here, neither of them made a move to leave. Keith clears his throat. So, Matt let Shiro up into the DJ booth. Pidge's head snaps up so fast, he's certain they have whiplash. <gasps> what? He told me I'd be first in the booth! And then he's following a small angry Pidge as they stomp through the crowd. He casts one last look over his shoulder, chewing his bottom lip. He hopes Lance is alright. Lance isn't alright. Not by long shots. Not by the longest shots. Not by miles and miles and... Hunk, what's she even doing here? He groans, tilting his head back until it hits the tile. He's sitting on the floor in the men's bathroom and, yeah, gross, but he's drunk and he's upset and his legs can't be asked to hold him up right now. Hunk is knelt down next to him, carefully avoiding putting his knees or butt on the bathroom floor. Smart man. He has one hand on the wall to balance him, and the other is on Lance's shoulder. The firm but gentle touch grounds him, and it's a much-needed support. I don't know, man, Hunk says, voice calm and soothing on Lance's frazzled nerves. Maybe he should just get home and visit her family. It wouldn't be too weird. Ah, there he is. Always the voice of reason. And thinking about it logically, yeah, that makes sense. But Lance isn't really a fan of logic right now. But why is she here? He says with more emphasis, gesturing wildly to the bathroom and the club beyond. Hunk shrugs, giving him a small, barely there smile. Lance knows he's not feeling it, but he's trying to smile for him like it's the last anger keeping him from drifting away into the chaotic form of his own damn emotions. She was always more of a partier than we were. It's not really surprising that she's here. But Hunk! Lance whines, lifting his head to stare at Hunk, brows furrowing and bottom lip sticking out. It's quivering and it's not entirely an act. His eyes are still burning from the few tears he's already shed. Why tonight? That's not fair! She looked happy! Like what happened doesn't even bother her! Like she doesn't think about me at all! Hunk frowns then, but it's more pensive than anything. But Lance, you were happy until you saw her, weren't you? Well, yeah, but... And do you think about her all the time? No, but... That was a problem. Lance hoves, crossing his arms over his chest and looking away. Why are you defending her? He mumbles the accusation. What? I'm not. And when Lance glances up at him, he sees the offense in Hunk's expression. He sighs, shaking his head. His grip on Lance's shoulder tightens. When he speaks again, his voice is softer, kinder, and calms his nerves. I'm not defending her, dude. You know how I felt. How I feel about her. You know I never really liked her to begin with. Ah, I know. Lance mumbles, unable to hide the wry smile that curves his lips. After the worst of the breakup at best, Hunk hadn't hesitated to give him his I told you so, speech. So you know that I'd never defend her after what she did to you. 
What I am trying to say is that you shouldn't be upset. He holds up a finger to Lance's lips when he opens his mouth to protest, effectively cutting him off. Lance scowls at him. That's not to say that you don't have a right to be upset because you do, but you've moved past her, dude. You don't think about her. You've gotten over her. You've healed in so many ways, and I'd hate to see your night ruined just because she's here. She doesn't deserve to have that power over you, Lance. Don't give her the satisfaction. Don't let her bring you down. Lance looks up at him, eyes burning and vision wavering, and oh god, he's going to cry again. But that doesn't stop him from giving his best friend a small smile and whispering, Thanks, hunk. And then his voice cracks right as the first tear falls. He hastily wipes it away, sniffling back the snot that's welling up in his nose and wiping his eyes to keep more tears from fully forming. Hunk sighs, giving up his fight and sitting on the floor next to him, wrapping an arm around his shoulder. No problem, buddy. Let it out, and when you've calmed down, we can go hang out with the others. Lance leans in and groaning. Oh, God, Keith is probably wondering what the heck is wrong with me. I'm sure he'd understand. He's a lot nicer than you usually give him credit for. I basically just freaked out on him and ran away. We were having a good time, Hunk, and I ruined it. You didn't ruin it, Lance. I'm sure he's just worried. That's worse! He tightens his grip on his shoulders, shaking him slightly. We're all here for you, buddy. Even Keith. I don't want to talk to him about Naima! He grumbles, smooshing his face against Hunk's shoulder. You don't have to. What if he asks? Just tell him you're not ready to talk about it. I'm sure he don't understand. Maybe. He really, really doesn't want to talk to Keith about his baggage, let alone ex-girlfriend baggage. Especially since it happened over a year ago and he's apparently still freaking out about it. But that's not fair. He doesn't care. He really doesn't. He's gotten over her and moved past it, just like Hunk had said. He's just caught off guard. He wasn't expecting to see her, and when he had, just all the emotions that he'd long since buried came roaring to the surface. It had been too much. It's still too much, but he's getting a better handle on himself now that the shock is fading. He knows he's being ridiculous, hiding out in the bathroom from an ex-girlfriend who he never wants to see again and who probably doesn't want anything to do with him, and he kind of hates himself a little more for acting this way. Those feelings of shame and self-deprecating hate give him the strength and motivation to pull himself together. He'll be damned if he lets Naima ruin tonight for him. Tonight's all about his friends. He doesn't want to ruin the night, either. Oh god, both times he's dragged Hunk to a club, he's ended up comforting him in the bathroom over Naima. What an awful track record. He refuses to ruin Hunk's night again. He has been having fun with Keith. A lot of fun, actually. They had been laughing, and Keith had been standing so close, and he'd really been enjoying being able to casually lean into him because, hey, he's a touchy guy, okay? But the sight of Keith's smile, so close and so entirely focused on him, had been doing pleasant things to his insides. He finds it hard to believe that's the guy he was convinced he hated just a couple months ago. All of a sudden, he wants nothing more than to just be with Keith. He just wants to find him and go back to what they were doing and how they were like before Lance had seen her. He loves her. He really does. And he can't even begin to explain what his presence is doing to calm his nerves. And he loves Pidge. And he loves how they're so fiercely protective of him, going so far as to threaten to claw out Lama's eyes on the dance floor. He has great friends, to be honest, but he really just wants to be with Keith. Keith wasn't there for the Nima incident. He won't remind Lance of what it was like back then. He's new and exciting, and Lance finds it hard to believe that he'll look at him with pity. He really hopes Keith doesn't pity him. If he does, all Lance has to do is challenge him to a dance-off, and their dynamic will be restored. He likes their dynamic! He takes comfort in it. And even as they get closer, that strangely competitive and teasing dynamic is still there. He doesn't want it any other way. Right now, he really wants that. He doesn't know why. Maybe it's the alcohol talking, but he really feels like right now, in this moment, Keith is the only thing that can make him feel normal again. But he's got to pull his crab together before he can go and find him. He's not sure how long they stay in the bathroom, but Hunk stays with him the whole time, talking with him and taking his mind off of everything in ways that only Hunk can. They get a wide array of reactions. 
Some of them are strange looks, to which hunk glares at the lid look away, but more often than not, the guys try to talk to them. It's usually an amusing conversation, and it's a welcome distraction. One dude stumbles to the stall, takes one look at Lance, and says, Too much vibe, Gap. What's up with you, bro? To which Lance replies, Ex-girlfriend! And the guy just nods, nearly losing his balance in the process, gives him a thumbs up, and says, Don't worry about it, dude. You're a good-looking guy. Which must have been crazy. Before disappearing in the stall. By the time they leave the bathroom, Lance is feeling much better. He's still a little guarded and on edge, but he's ready and determined to get his night back on track. First up, the bar. He's a little relieved that Keith isn't there anymore, and he convinces Hunk to do a run of shots with him. Hunk agrees, reluctantly, but only after making Lance agree that they'll be his last drinks of the night. Three shots of cheap tequila each later, Lance is ready! He stumbles a little as he walks, but his limbs are pleasantly numb, the beat of the music is thrumming through his body, and he's ready to just dance and forget. His vision isn't necessarily blurry, but it's hard to focus. As the shots start to trickle their way into his system, any buzz he lost while in the bathroom comes surging back and then some. They find Keith near the DJ booth, standing aside and watching with amusement as Shiro and Pidge poke at and fight over things on Matt's soundboards. Every time Shiro reaches for something, Pidge slaps at his hand, glaring up at him. He looks infinitely amused by this, and Matt is just standing to one side, shaking his head and keeping an eye on his laptop. As soon as he sees Keith, his vision narrows down and something that had been tight in his chest loosens. He feels like he can breathe again, which is concerning, seeing as he hadn't realized that he'd have been having trouble before. When they reach where he's standing, Lance throws an arm over his shoulder, placing his other hand on his own hip. What's going on here? He says, proud with how casual he sounds, despite how thick his tongue feels. He nods toward the DJ booth, staring at the three there instead of looking at Keith. He could feel Keith jump and then relax, and he could see him staring at him, but Lance isn't quite ready to meet his eyes. Not yet. Eventually, he looks away. It was mad Matt let Shiro up into the booth first. I think he's now regretting letting either of them up there at all. Oh, I wanted to see the equipment, Hunk says, coming up on Lance's other side. He stares up at the booth longingly and mutters, No one ever lets me touch the equipment. Lance pats his arm with his free hand. All in good time, buddy! Then he shakes Keith a little with the arm he has resting over his shoulders. He's not quite being subtle about using him for balance. So, Keith and Mark, my dude, my man, did I miss anything? Keith shakes his head, gesturing toward the booth. Just this. And Lance can see him turn to look at him again, and he's afraid of what expression might be there. Especially when Keith's voice is suddenly soft and so filled with concern. Are you all right? Lance smiles then, a small sad smile that he knows doesn't reach his eyes, and answers in a voice just as soft, I wasn't, but I am now, and I will be. He steals himself, fixing that smile in place, and looks at Keith. The concern in his voice is reflected in his eyes, and his thick brows are pinched just a little, his lips pursed into a small pouting of frown. Something in Lance's eye twists, and a warmth fills his chest. His smile becomes a little more genuine as he tilts his head. Don't worry about it, Keith, I'm fine. His eyes search Lance's for a moment before he looks away, chewing on his bottom lip so subtly that Lance wonders if he even realizes he's doing it. Do you want to talk about it? Or whatever? At that, Lance throws his head back and laughs. Keith, buddy, I appreciate the laugh, but I really don't. I have some time talking about it. I just want to forget about it and have fun, you know? And then Keith's expression softens, and Lance can feel him relax a little. Yeah, okay. So let's go dance! He says, pulling his arm back to put his hands on Keith's shoulders and spinning him around. Keith almost immediately digs his heels into the floor, turning his head back, eyes blown wide with sudden panic. But what about- They'll catch up! What? Keith, we're dancers! We're in a club! I'm tired of thinking! Let's just cut loose and dance! Keith is caught between scowling and looking bangs, and honestly, it's one of the cutest things Lance has ever seen. He's got some damn attractive friends. Hunk, we're going to go ahead. Meet us on the dance floor. 
He calls over his shoulder and catches sight of Hunk looking at them fondly and waving them away. He turns back around in time to see Keith's pleading look. He sends Hunk's way and Lance laughs. Keith eventually stops resisting and Lance pulls ahead of him, taking him by the arm and guiding him through the crowd. He doesn't think Keith will just leave him at this point, but touching him, feeling his presence behind him is comforting. He loves all his friends, but there's just something about Keith that makes him feel better right now, and he craves that. He's grateful for the chance to be alone with him, even if that's in the middle of a crowded club. He's pushing through the thick of the crowd with Keith in tow, looking for a good spot to stop and claim some space for themselves when the people in front of him part and he sees her. He freezes in his tracks, grip on Keith's arm tightening. His breath hitches as his throat locks up. She's beautiful. She always has been, and no matter how many shitty things she did, and no matter how messy their rig up was, that won't detract from it. She's gorgeous. Her complexion is dark club lights highlighting the spots where vitiligo has lightened part of her skin. Her dreads are still dyed blonde, but her natural color is coming through at the roots, giving her hair the same two-toned look that her skin has. She's wearing a blue dress that fits to all the curves of her body. She's gorgeous, and his heart clenches painfully at the sight of her. She was his once. He gave her everything she didn't want it, and she broke him. Now she's here, smiling and laughing with her friends like none of it ever happened, with no clue that Lance is there, a world crumbling around him. Punk is right, of course. He shouldn't let her have this power over him because he is over her. But seeing her for the first time since their breakup just brings up so many emotions he had thought were long gone. They was unpleasantly inside of him, fighting with his desire to simply let it go. God, he's a mess. With some effort, he rips his eyes away from her, letting go of Keith's arm and spinning back around. Not this way, he mumbles, crossing his arms over his chest. He's not able to look at Keith, so he stares down and off to the side, hoping, praying that Keith won't question it. But of course, Keith isn't stupid. It doesn't take a genius to see his sudden change in attitude. When he risks the glance up, Keith is staring over his shoulder beyond him towards where Naima is. He's not sure Keith will even be able to pick her out of the crowd. He doesn't know how much Keith knows. Heck, he's not even sure Keith knows that this whole thing is because X problems. But judging from his face, he knows enough. His brows are furrowed, lips twisting into a scowl as he glares at the crowd. His gaze is unmoving, eyes fierce and sparking, and Lance wonders if he's zeroed in on her. Is he even looking at the right girl? Does he know it's a girl? Lance glances over his shoulder, following Keith's gaze at, yep, she's still there, laughing and tossing several locks of hair over her shoulder in that flippant way that he once found endearing. He feels unfocused, everything spins, and he's starting to regret those last three shots. He's not sure how it happened, but Keith has suddenly taken his arm, tugging him away. He stumbles after him as they weave through the crowd, finding a space carved out to take the floor. Keith turns to face him then, hand still on his arm. Without thinking, Lance starts to turn towards where he knows Naima is standing just to see if she's still in view or if they're safely away. But then Keith is tugging at his arm, pulling his attention back. Lance stares at him, eyes wide and eyebrows raised. Keith scowls at him, lips set into a firm line as he says loud enough to be heard over the music. Don't you dare look back. And Lance hunches his shoulders, looking away and feeling guilty. He didn't think Keith could read him that well. When he glances up through his lashes, Keith's expression has softened the ghost of a smile on his lips. Just keep your eyes on me. He drops his hand from Lance's arm and takes a step back, already swaying a little to the music. His feet move driven by the beat, and his head and shoulders bob along with it. His arms look like he's not quite sure what to do with them. He looks like he's trying to mimic what the people around him are doing, but the pained expression on his face makes it look so incredibly awkward. Lance doesn't get it. He's seen Keith dance before dozens of times. Keith is always full of confidence when he dances, so certain and sure of his movements. Lance isn't sure he'd ever notice if Keith fucked up because the guy's just so sure about everything he does. And he does it all with such a cool calm, like nothing he's doing is actually impressive and he would never do anything less. 
It's always been frustrating and irritating, but since working with it, Lance has found a strange appreciation for it. It's kind of endearing to see him like this now. All that confidence and calm is gone. Not a trace of it left alive. He looks as awkward and unsure as someone who's never danced before in their life. He looks self-conscious. And that's not something Lance is used to seeing on him. He's not sure he likes it. Keith is so great at everything, and Lance doesn't think he should ever feel self-conscious about something he's so incredibly talented with, like dancing. Yet, here he is, in front of him, dancing like it pains him. He has the beat, sure, but he's so incredibly rigid and looks like he's afraid of actually doing anything besides swaying back and forth and awkwardly moving his arms. And yet, he's doing it under Lance's full attention in an attempt to distract him, no matter how uncomfortable he is. Lance feels the small smile curve his lips as a touch of fondness fills his chest. Before he really realizes what he's doing, he's stepping forward into Keith's space, hands sliding to rest on his hips as he had done earlier. His grip is firm as he tries to wiggle Keith's hips in an attempt to get him to loosen up. He knows freestyle isn't the guy's strong suit, but this is ridiculous. He knows Keith could do so much more. You're holding back, he says, voice laced with amusement. Keith glares at him, face twisted due to that scowl that he knows so well. The lighting makes it hard to see any sort of blush, but he can tell from the extra lines around his lips and eyes that he's embarrassed. Shut up and dance with me, he snaps, and it's such a needlessly aggressive demand and so completely Keith that Lance finds himself grinning, and this time he can feel it reaching his eyes. This is what he needed, what he had been craving. Keith just has this uncanny ability to make him forget his problems and just feel like himself again. And he does it just by being Keith. This guy is my destiny. The thought comes unbidden from the recesses of his mind, startling him. He blames it on the alcohol, hazing his mind, and making him needlessly sentimental. He's known to be an emotional drunk, and tonight's been an emotional night. He really probably shouldn't have had those last few shots. But still, that thought has a nice ring to it. He likes to think he was meant to meet all of his friends, and he thinks that maybe, just maybe, that maybe Keith is part of his destiny, too. Keith helped him get into regionals, after all. Keith drives him to be a better dancer. Keith fits so seamlessly into his group of friends. Keith is the only person who's managed to dance as a duo with him. And now Keith is here making him forget about all the negative emotions that plague him and letting him just live in the moment. Maybe the D in room 4B stands for destiny? All right, now he's getting a little ridiculous. He's definitely had too much to drink. Or maybe it's just all hitting him now. Either way, his thoughts are getting way too deep and way too emotional and way too philosophical for a club night. So he forces himself to focus on the guy standing right in front of him, beautiful and scowly. Keith stares at his shitty thing grin for only a few seconds before snapping, Shut up! And Lance can feel him bristling, embarrassment coloring his features. Lance just grins because he hadn't said anything, but he thinks it's hilarious that Keith can read so far into his expressions. Lance chuckles and Keith must be able to tell that it's not working because his expression softens. He attempts a smile and it's so endearingly shy. And when he speaks, his voice is quieter than before, just barely heard above the music. Uh, just dance with me. And so they dance. But it's not like it was earlier, when their dances are throwbacks to ridiculous things with wild movements and high energy. Their movements now are smaller, more confined. Lance doesn't move his hands from Keith's hips, and Keith doesn't push him away. His own hands come to rest on Lance's arms, and while they sway and roll to the pulse of the driving beat, they seem to get impossibly closer. Lance wants to blame it on the crowd, pushing in on them from all sides. He wants to blame it on the alcohol buzzing through his system and making his limbs tingle. He wants to blame it on Keith's eyes, so dark, yet flashing so impossibly purple in the club lights. 
He wants to blame it on everything, but the fact remains that something has shifted. It's so small, so subtle, so indescribable and impossible to pinpoint, but it shifts. And suddenly the atmosphere between them has changed. They're so close that Lance can feel Keith's body whenever he rolls his, and it's not long before Keith picks up on the movement and they're moving together, dancing the same, moving as one. He feels the beat through the floor, through the air, through Keith, connecting them and pulsing through his very core. He doesn't notice the distance closing, but suddenly Keith is so, so close, he can practically taste the rum on his breath. Their eyes lock, and he can't look away. Keith's irises flashing so many different shades and darkest shadows draw him in, refusing to let him go. He finds it hard to focus on anything else. Everything around them fizzles out of existence as his vision tunnels in on Keith's face. His pale, flawless skin. His hair pulled back in that ponytail that just does things to him. Bangs falling across his forehead and stuck to his temples with sweat. His small, sharp nose. Those ridiculously alluring lips. He doesn't realize he's staring until his eyes dart upwards and for a moment he panics, realizing that Keith has seen him staring at his lips. But then Keith's eyes are flickering down to his own mouth and Lance feels his heart stop and his chest is breath shuddering out. Then Keith is leaning forward, chests pressing together as he does so. Lance is frozen, unable to move, as Keith stares at him through half-lidded eyes. His gaze flickers downward as their noses brush, and Lance feels electricity spark through that small, small, tender touch. He can taste Keith's breath now, feel it fanning out across his lips, and he realizes his own are hanging open, parted slightly. In shock? Anticipation? He doesn't know. Keith tilts his chin upward, a small, sharp movement that brushes his bottom lip against Lance's top lip. It's a small, tender touch, so light and fleeting, and makes Lance's chest clench, craving more. But Keith pulls back a fraction, letting their noses rest against each other, lips hovering mere centimeters away from Lance's. For just a moment, time stands still. And he's certain Keith is holding his breath, too. He doesn't know who moves first, but suddenly there's lips against his, and he's kissing Keith. Holy shit, he's kissing Keith! It starts out soft and hesitant, but eager lips sliding together, sharing small, short kisses, probably too wet and far too sloppy. It's bobbing as their lips part slightly, slotting together. Their bodies still move together, swaying to the beat, a slave to it, unable to let it go. Then Keith's hands slide up his arms, up his neck, carting through his hair, cupping his head and tilting it slightly to better fit their lips together. Out of their own accord, his fingers tighten on Keith's hips, jerking him forward to press them firmly together. He gasps at the sudden roughness, and Lance takes the opportunity to slide his tongue past his lips, licking into his mouth. Keith only hesitates for a moment before he's responding, arms tightening and holding Lance's head firmly in place. Lance's hands slide around his waist, holding onto him just as tight, like he's the only thing anchoring him to this reality. And Lance desperately doesn't want to let him go. Everything else fades away. He feels like they're alone in a writhing, twisting sea with only each other to keep themselves afloat. And while Keith is the only thing keeping him anchored, he also feels like he's stealing his breath away. He's drowning, gasping, and being swept away by those dark eyes, soft lips, a greedy tongue, rough hands, and firm body. It's consuming him, washing over him, and dragging him under. Their kiss is sloppy, messy, and bordering on desperate Lips groping and tongues searching with a hunger that's dizzying, but it feels so, so good. He can't get enough. In that moment, he needs Keith like he needs air. But the more he breathes him in, the more he's drowning. He's drowning, but he thinks this is a nice way to die. Later, after the fact, there will be many things about that night that blur in his memory with time and the haze of alcohol. He'll remember how Pitch came barreling through the crowd to collide with them, startling them apart. 
He'll remember how Keith let go of him like he had been burned, dark eyes wide in panic, even as he reverently licked his lips. He'll remember a similar panic rising up in his gut-threatening nausea for the umpteenth time that night. He'll remember the gang gathering and dancing. He'll remember Alora tugging him along the dance with her, but all the while he'll be caught between avoiding looking at Keith and finding his eyes drawn to him. He'll remember how he had completely forgotten about Nima. He'll remember how... Somehow, Keith had gotten a hold of one of the glow bracelets and had looked up at him shyly through his lashes as he slipped it onto his wrist. He'll remember how he had downed one last drink before asking Hunk to sit outside with him to clear his head with fresh air. He'll remember piling into Pidge's van at the end of the night, climbing into the back seat and pressing his forehead against the window. He won't remember much of the car ride, just the bumps in the road and the cool of the glass against his skin, the blur of voices, and actively trying not to vomit. He won't remember how long it took to get to Pidge's and Hunk's apartment, but he would vaguely remember being helped up the stairs and collapsing on the couch before passing out. The next morning, he'll wake in pain from both his head and his guts, and will hurry to the bathroom only to find that he had slipped with his shoes on and Pidge had thrown a dick on his forehead. Hug will make a light breakfast when he and Pidge stumble out of their rooms and there'll be little conversation and a lot of coffee. Too tired to scrub his face, he'll borrow a headband from Hunk to hide Pidge's artwork and head home. Once there, he'll trudge to his room and take a long hot shower before collapsing onto his bed. And there, suffering between a pounding head and rolling stomach, he'll think about the kiss. He won't remember details. He won't remember who initiated it, and the events will blur in his mind's eye, but he'll remember some things. He'll remember how he thought Keith's lips were soft. He'll remember grabbing him desperately. He'll remember Keith running his fingers through his hair and moaning into his mouth. He'll remember being pressed up against him and gasping for air as he drowned. He'll remember that, at the time, he had liked it. He had liked it a lot. Staring at pale stars on his ceiling, looking as sickly in the daylight as he feels, he'll whisper, What the fuck? And then again, softer and with more desperation, <laughs>